Hello everybody on live stream and welcome to the 24th Knowledge Seekers Workshop. And uh, once again, as usual, we're here with Mr. Kesh <clears throat> and with uh, there'll be a few people from the Spaceship Institute as well as the evening goes on. Uh, whoa, that was a big cough. <laughs> that was Mr. Kesh <laughs> making his... Uh, making his appearance <laughs> and uh, I think Marek's on line too from the Spaceship Institute so that's interesting or is it I'm oh, sorry Marco uh, not Marek and uh, okay so we're ready to begin and I'll uh, hand it over to Mr. Kesh and he'll uh, uh, get things going here and we have uh, a few people with questions and uh, and I know Sandor in particular has some questions that he'd like to get answered and um, a few other people as well. So let's carry on. I'll give it over to you, Mr. Kesh, and uh, uh, allow you to do your thing. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I think we should say hello, planet Earth. Um, wherever you are, I hope we can further the knowledge of ourselves and what we know with workshops like this. Um, as the uh, Knowledge Seekers is, group is on holiday still for another week, I think, after this. Uh, so, uh, we are more or less on a dormant condition. Some things are getting done and some work is getting done in the background. Um, the reactors are all in the running condition. Very interesting uh, Positions are coming up with the uh, new reactors, which are GANS fed. <coughs> this situation with our uh, uh, animals, with the frogs, is that we had to run a test uh, specifically for uh, a specific condition to see the reaction. And uh, with carrying on that test, uh, we lost all the three frogs in one go. Uh, the frogs and the tapples. <clears throat> so, we are waiting to see how the next step is going to be. We still have two tapples, which are kept originally, they have not changed. But uh, through a test for um, part of the, uh, what we call the World Health Organization um, test, we, we did a test and to to understand the condition, and within less than four hours, we lost two tap holes, and then 48 hours later, we lost the frog. Uh, there is a specific characteristics with them, <clears throat> so we are monitoring the condition in the tank to see the the progress and what will happen next. Uh, the situation with everything else is as the same and uh, it seems the whole world is on holiday when Italy goes or Europe goes on holiday for us on this end. If, um, on the other hand, the Italians are trying and testing their torch in the torch system, they have emptied the battery, they are loading two batteries at the same time. Hopefully this week they should see the, the progress, they, were, they had a loaded <clears throat> one half load and full load battery. So they it took them nearly a week to empty one of the batteries. And now they have rewired it and we'll see how it loads up. Uh, they have gathered some information and data on how it can be loaded. <clears throat> but at the same time we are using what we have. <sighs> with our system here. Uh, is there any other question? Are there any questions? I'm sorry to talk. Um, uh, perhaps Sandor would like to... Um, yes. March right in there with your questions, eh? Yes, uh, I have uh, some questions. 
because uh, there are so many people who are trying to replicate the uh, experiments which are easy to make, like uh, guns uh, capture after uh, succeeded the, the nanomaterial production. And unfortunately, there are uh, some uh, fellows uh, who were uh, disappointed by the, their own failure to uh, produce what they expected, and they start uh, to make all kind of rumor and uh, assertions that uh, that uh, produ produced material is something uh, else. So that's why it would be very useful uh, if you could advise uh, what kind of method we could uh, do uh, easily to test uh, if uh, created material is, for instance, CO2 guns and uh, not something else. Uh, in uh, the uh, ninth knowledge seekers uh, presentation about Fukushima, I remember Mr. Cash uh, told about guns that it can't be destroyed by acid, for instance. So an acid test could be uh, much easier uh, to do uh, at home and not so costly as uh, an infrared spectroscopy done at a special laboratory. So is there some method to differentiate the uh, ma uh, materials uh, in uh, guns form from other uh, kind of uh, sediment materials, uh, such like precipitates, uh, such like precipitates of different oxides? So that would be very useful also for those who want to uh, check uh, if uh, the outcome of their experiment really produced uh, what we expected. So I'm thinking it would be good to have such an experiment uh, or a test method uh, either by physical or by chemical properties which uh, could be done to make a difference between uh, uh, guns and non-guns materials. This is a very nice question. We uh, put it this way, I've never thought of uh, setting up a test for it, because um, I've tested in different ways. Let me think about it. Yes, we can do. Um, I think uh, when the knowledge seekers come, we'll, we'll set this up. Because I test with acid, we test with different materials. And um, they they stay, they keep their condition as they are. Um, let me think about it. I will definitely do this in the first month we are back. You're Thank correct. you very much. Yeah, Thank we never thought much. of it. Yeah, it has to be done. You're correct. Let us let us find a way to to do it, and we show different tests, most probably, to show how to understand the separation between the gans and gas. Even the institutes who do the the testing with Raman spectroscopy, they have problems with uh, different sediments because of the plasma condition of the gans. Uh, in some cases, depends where they take um, the material from the tube after testing. On the top, they see CO2, and on the bottom, they see CO3CA, or they see CO3K. We've seen this in Raman spectroscopy, and I have some reports on this, so you're correct. Let us think of a way, and we'll most probably do it, and the knowledge seekers will release it. Thank you very much. So my purpose is to make uh, uh, this uh, knowledge uh, be understood by uh, experiments which are uh, easy to replicate, as, as, you, as you exposed uh, um, earlier when, uh, when uh, you started this uh, knowledge seekers uh, movement. So yeah, intention it is, is you're that, correct. Yeah. You're correct. I mean, till it doesn't come from uh, grassroots, from people, what problem they have, we don't see it. Uh, we are very much cocooned in our own shell here, and the way we do research. <coughs> so, you're correct, we have to, I never thought of this, so let me work on it. By the time the knowledge seekers are back, as usual, Armin and Marco and John will show a way to do it, and they'll post it. Uh, recently, it was a gentleman, uh, uh, Spanish-speaking gentleman, uh, Felipe Ponce Espinosa. That's his name, uh, means uh, with spines or with thorns. He had very thorny comments in, in the recent period. So after he failed to achieve uh, by his experiments uh, the desired result, and uh, he became very negative. 
And when I talked uh, with him via Skype comments, uh, I found out that, uh, in fact, uh, he is not uh, antagonistic, such uh, like those who are paid uh, to troll on the forums uh, against uh, people. Just, uh, I think uh, he would like uh, to confirm, to justify his own failure if everybody else fails. In that case, uh, uh, he was uh, successful. But. Uh, I think uh, his mind is changed, and uh, now he's repeating again experiments, and uh, hopefully he will document it. So we. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> the thing is, we see a lot of this at the moment. Uh, a lot of people are testing different things, and getting different results. Uh, and uh, um, in some cases, people who go to produce guns, they got to realize they have to. Uh, to create a condition of the uh, energy extraction from the from the the liquid they use, the salt they use. Um, you have to have a process at least of current flow. Uh, plasmatic current flow is the is the backbone of creating the GANs because you reduce or increase the environment for the uh, nanomaterials to be released from the surface of the solid state matter. There is a, it's a, it, the people are testing and as you said, we have to see it and how it is. Everybody is not, uh, as you say, opposing the foundation. It's just that they, as they don't understand, they, they get frustrated. We've seen yeah. this even in the books, uh, it's very correct. We know, for example, in the past few weeks, there is a guy who bought a book. The book has been sent and um, through the blockage by the people who are trying to block, um, what do you call it, distribution of the books. He got angry and he paid people to attack the server. Our server people, our webmasters team approached him, why are you launching these kind of attacks? He says, I bought a book, they didn't deliver it to me, so I'm taking my revenge. But his book is sitting something like 30 kilometers from him, in, in, in a, what do you call it, <coughs> in a depot. <clears throat> so, uh, this is how we are uh, facing these kind of things, so we, we don't mind. The I think opposition. The good, good, sorry, the good, PR is, good PR Pardon? is needed, good PR is needed to show to the environment yes. to the, that we are doing good things, we are not uh, doing anything against them. And um, such cases can be handled with some skill and with yeah. some communication. Thank you very much for your work. Uh, 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 the process is um, very simple, it's that uh, you people understand different people's languages and you can, you can uh, communicate to, to solve these problems. We don't see it, we, we don't have that kind of access to every language. So you understand the Spanish, thank you very much for your work. Is there any other question? Yes, please. Uh, sorry again, me. Uh, how about uh, the? Uh, is there any uh, record about uh, which concentration of salt is ideal for CO2 capture? Uh, because I uh, made uh, also with uh, uh, concentrated, uh, saturated salt solution, and now I made a setup with only two percent salt in the water. So, which would be an optimum uh, solution for uh, obtaining good results? Never done. <clears throat> we have never scaled it. The knowledge seekers can tell you we just um, add salt and whatever it is, because the one of the processes we have when we start is that um, after a while, as the units, the water evaporates, we keep on adding water to it. And uh, sometime during the last uh, months, uh, I think John came up and says that uh, we were keep on adding salt water to the containers and we found out we increasing the concentration. So we changed to the natural water. We never done this, but uh, the to my understanding from all the experiments I've done over time, is that the concentration of the salt is part of the process because the 
uh, the magnetic gravitational field uh, environment in each uh, section dictates what is happening in there, plus the environmental magnetic field. <clears throat> As you've seen, especially if you use a cubic boxes, you use more or less the same salt, the same wires, and in one you get the CO2, and in one you get CH3, and in another one you get CO. So, uh, the salt concentration is so much um, part of the equation. Uh, but uh, the field, because uh, this uh, salt is part of the matter condition, is the field uh, interaction of the gravitational magnetic field of the ganses in each compartment decides. Um, some times ago, I did a test, I allowed the uh, the um, amount of the CO2, uh, I didn't touch a box, a cubic cut or cell in a, in a, in a box, and um, I thought if the amount of CO2 will increase, will it change, affect the other side? In one case it did, in another case didn't do, because the total environment was dictating it. Um, if you go back in one of the first you videos, I think we put up uh, was that two cells are in reddish color and one cell is white and one cell next to it is uh, brown and the other one is what do you call it? Red, not brown, but the other one is uh, white again. I, uh, I don't think the salt content has much effect, but it has an effect in the production of the protein, uh, not much um, on the production of the change of the ganses. You'll find the direct effect of the salt content uh, will be on the protein production. Okay, so this will be a good subject for uh, our private experiments, which we do at home. I think um, somewhere we Sorry about that. Somewhere we have to start putting a point that people, you know, like a Wikipedia, we have to establish that people can add into it. I think uh, Cash Foundation Wikipedia has to be set up somewhere down the line. Um, that uh, people can uh, add, they can't correct. Because I don't agree the way the Wikipedia is set up. Because uh, there are some people who have a um, limited knowledge and they dictate according to the knowledge what can go on on Wikipedia. It's not a free point of reference that you can add knowledge to knowledge. So it's still again, it's the peer review condition in Wikipedia. <clears throat> and that's why you find a lot of people have problem with this setup, with this organization. So, so no previous notes shall be deleted uh, nor altered. So no previous no. records shall be deleted, shall be preserved as they are. If there is some new knowledge, that can be mentioned, so it is over... Uh, it's, uh, um, it's added. It's a better version. But any time, then there will be a possibility to revert to an older version, which may be worked. So I think yeah, that would be a good we, way of... Sorry. <coughs> we need to look at setting up like a Wikipedia setup for this, for this technology. But um, this is this is something which uh, it has to be done sooner or later. But I don't, we don't know. We'll see about how we can do it, uh, how it will be done. Uh, but uh, there is no limit. Uh, yeah. So Marek Istvanek already made a, a website uh, which started to work uh, under the address openmagneticlight.net where uh, mm -hmm. articles can be added. So that will be maybe a good starting point. And after gaining more experience with it, uh, can uh, change to a better one. Oh, sorry for I talk so much. I didn't know this. No, 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 carry on, because we can't have the same people asking the same questions. Thank you very much for opening our eyes to some problems which is sitting there. <clears throat> uh, so... It's something that we've known about for a long time, but I think Sandor is the one that to point that out. So thank you, Sandor, for yeah. pointing out something that we definitely needed to know and a question that needed to be asked. Um, mm, uh, but I just wanted to tell you my experience as well. 
is that 50% or 5%, you still get GANs. Yeah, you get, I think the, the level of the salt is, um, it tastes the, the production of the um, amino acids on the top layer. Yeah, it's uh, a different condition, very... the condition of sea, a different condition, the condition of human blood. Yes, very much so. Um, the, 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 we've seen this, if I can go in the other direction, uh, expanding on the knowledge a little bit, is that um, we see uh, partially the creation of um, um, trying to uh, phrase it in the right way. The production of cholesterol in blood vessels has very much to do with the salt content or collection of the salt content of materials within the blood. So, um, because uh, cholesterols uh, are and in points, certain points of the physical uh, blood vessels or arteries, um, the, a condition is created that the salt condition in the blood, because even blood has its own salt, even the brain has its own salt for production of its own uh, cells. When the salt condition changes, then we we'll see um, residual of uh, protein, what we call cholesterol. And then, the, whatever the organs which are responsible for uh, production of uh, um, different amino acids in the body, will take it as a reference point, and uh, attach and uh, it, it grows and, and, and escalates to further reproduction of the same thing. So, uh, the salt content in the, in the physical way in man's body, is, um, what do you call it, is the same condition as a, uh, as a salt density or the, of the salt content within the blood. And it can come through different ways. But uh, um, different habitual eating creates that condition. And meanwhile, it, meanwhile okay. it has been observed uh, that uh, the level of the emotional uh, tone influences very much what kind of uh, materials are uh, produced in the body. So anger yes. makes a lot of cholesterol production and uh, there is a higher blood sugar preparing the body for a fast action for defending himself. When it is somebody in fear, uh, he, he, body prepares to run away. And if he cannot uh, run away, it gets into terror, then it creates poisons to make uh, his meat uh, to not be edible. It's a very interesting thing. We usually... Um, our body is... Um, our psychological or emotional part dictates our way of physical operation. Um, we emotionally, we see um, uh, that majority of the diseases or um, ailments or change of condition in the body which is not enforced from outside, is done by the emotional part enforcing itself, its, its condition on the physical part. So you're quite right, it can be done, and we've seen it, we've seen it in reversal of uh, different conditions. But they change the salt content in different positions, and that leads to a different uh, release of, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, proteins, and what we call uh, the conditions of the blood in uh, cholesterol or sugar. He says, so what salt mixture? Saturation is ideal for good blood health. 
it depends what your body is made of. <coughs> it is depends in where you live. It depends in what condition you live. Uh, different uh, food habits we have observed create um, different uh, condition for salt level within the blood. In a lot of uh, nations, uh, salt is deliberately added to a lot of food because of the environmental condition that the blood can can sustain and operate, or the body can operate in that area. Where in other part of the world we don't accept that kind of so much salt in the food. There is uh, uh, there is understanding of physicality and condition with the environment, with the uh, cholesterol. Uh, and the body content, but so they call it salt of the within the blood and the, uh, and the tissues. There is no figure that you can fix and say this is what is going to be, what is the best, what is good for you can be lethal to somebody else, and what is uh, normal to the others um, can become unacceptable to you. This is what we observe. Eskimos don't have access to salt the way the human ra the rest of the human race does, but they still carry uh, and they only eat certain type of food. And we see the same with people in desert. Um, the food is restricted uh, in what is available to them, and we see both having near enough uh, similar conditioned blood, but slightly different. Next question. Um, I have I a like, okay, go ahead, Lana. Uh, yeah, I would like to share my experience because we were talking about guns. Uh, for sure, uh, nanomaterial gets dissolved in ferry chloride. In I, what? Ferry chloride. It's. Um, solution for etching printed circuit boards and I nano coated copper wires and the nano material with the copper wire got uh, dissolved inside. Can you give me the formula? What is what's this formula? Fe three C L I think. Uh, let me check on the internet and I'm gonna post it. FECL, maybe. What does it do? Sure. Does it actually totally takes it? Because we've done some tests that it, you see the, the top layers of nanomaterial removed, but you don't stop the process. Uh, well, dissolve completely the wire, too. Yeah, but does the process of production of uh, um, nano layer stops altogether if you leave it aside? Well, the wire just disappears. Gets ah, the wire is by the liquid. Uh, ah, does the uh, does the wire disappear before the nanomaterial, or both at the same time? Uh, pretty much both at the same time, I would say. It might be a way to dissolve the copper inside and leave the nanomaterial shell, like Mr. No, Kesh was I, that's talking what about. I was trying to do, but oh, okay. I the was easiest trying to way. The copper and the keyboard. Yeah, yeah, but this doesn't solve our problem. We uh, we want to when you destroy. I think what you do is the reverse of the way we create nano layers with this process, <clears throat> because the acid. Uh, takes the copper away, then you change the gravitational magnetic field from the bottom layer to the top. The way you create the uh, nano layers from the bottom to the top, from internally from the copper up, now you change the environment in that bottom layer which is in contact with the copper. When that goes, you change the environmental condition, you lose it. This is not a solution, I don't think so. 
uh, we want, I'm looking for a condition, you change the gravitational magnetic field environment of the uh, production, so you reverse it, this is the reverse process. Uh, we want to see a condition that without the material, the gas which we separate can be dissolved. <clears throat> and what dissolves what, and this is the process. And one of the ways, as um, Rick said, we, t we done a test um, a few years ago. If you want to keep a perfect nanotube, <clears throat> after you made your um, copper wire or whatever, um, make a hole or um, keep your tube, if you can hold it without crushing it, uh, in a vertical position, put it in an oven at high temperature, and the copper richly runs out, melts out, and you have a perfect nanotube. This is the only way we have managed up to do it with the, because the nanomaterials don't burn in that sense. Um, they stay intact. So if you leave it in the oven, the, the nano layers will not disintegrate. But the, the copper just melts out and runs out. Well, so my idea was, yeah, my idea was trying to etch it to get the nano material because I don't have high temperature oven. That's why. Yeah, but the thing is, you, you to me because I looked at this process before. What you do, you you are creating the you changing the condition from inside out. Because you dissolve the 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 copper in the acid, the acid dissolves the copper. The nano layers are gravitational magnetic field uh, materials. You take internally, you you take the environment they were stuck to, they were in balance. So you disturb it in a way you peel the orange from inside out. Uh, so that, I don't think that's the solution. Uh, it's good to get rid of it, but uh, it's not a solution to be able to decode, the, what they call it, and take the copper material out in Mongo. Uh, I'm looking at the process at the moment with the Italians. Uh, if we succeed, we let you know and how it is, and how it's been done. There's a piece of advice from the test we done for this um, condition in the on the frogs. Please do not do not consume or use any of your gas materials. We are doing a we are doing a program to do with the um, with the health at the moment, uh, and uh, <clears throat> my recommendation to you is please avoid um, in any shape or form. Uh, touching or consuming or being in touch with uh, the GANS materials so much as even the, the nano layers. Uh, we have seen, we are observing, and uh, we will. I'll explain it to you what has happened in uh, in uh, what we are observing. The material will be removed from the from the institute for further analysis, but. Um, uh, you'll find out that uh, what we're observing is that uh, the GANS material jellifies on the cell. In a way, it suffocates the cell. And this is what it looks like to me, because magnetic gravitation creates an insulation, a barrier around it. What we saw, like very much like the what I was explaining to the scientists, uh, the, the capture of the drones uh, a few years ago, where you magnetic field gravitationally uh, isolate a unit in a space. <clears throat> to the same process, now we see the part of this process with the, with this test, where the GANS creates a, literally a shell uh, around the animal. Um. An animal literally suffocates. Uh, Mr. Kesh, is there a way of coating the GANs so that it's still effective without it actually, um, you know, uh, uh, transferring materially into cells of their of a body and so on? In other words, to, I have to fix at, it in I place. Have, 
I have looked at it. There is a material in the market, but it has chemicals in it. And it's built for a specific purpose, and then it's been banned in some countries, you can get hold of it. Um, there is a, a spray, in England you can get it, in some specific places, what they call the chemists. Some chemists have it. It's a silicon spray, which is invisible, and they spray it around the, like patio doors and the doors between the garden and the house, and embedded in this silicon spray is um, is um, chemicals that ants don't like to cross, so you don't get any ants and God knows in your house. This silicon spray is so thin that it's, it actually is like a sh gel, it, it solidifies on it, but it has a time span, after a few weeks disappears. Um, we've, I'm looking for that kind of um, silicon spray. If it works and how long it lasts, we don't know because the it will not sit on the the material itself because it keeps that separation, galactic-magnetic field separation. And uh, we'll see if the, that's the only solution we have seen. Some people use cling films in a, in a very thin way to cover it, but you can't sit and do it on every wire. What about uh, with the cups of life, or do they have a technique to protect the GANs from leaving the cup when water is added and that sort of thing? No, there is no GANs produced in these cups. There is they, no GANs they don't, produced in They don't have a GANs coating though on them, or...? They have a nano coating, but they don't have a GANs. GANs material is when it's separated, it becomes individual. Okay, so uh, there's no GANS coating, it's just the nanomaterial coating. That's, I didn't understand. Yeah, but, the GANS, uh, you can't call it GANS coating. GANS is a floating material. It's, it's, it's like a gel, as you've seen it, or you powder it. <coughs> but it's not, it's not one, aren't, aren't there cups in different colors, uh, in terms of white and blue and green and so on? And uh, Is that not part of it, or...? No, no, that's Europe. created because of the, that, that, those colors are created because of the, um, the material we use as a base material to produce them. Okay, and that's created not, from, from water that would be put inside, I presume, or? Yes, it's in, it's the way the liquid and the composition we put in and duration we use. Each duration has different effect and different conditions. This, uh, I've seen people making a lot of things, uh, I've seen you sending me a picture, uh, what do you call it, uh, with a lot of uh, bars next to each other from winds, that he wants to speak about. Um, um, you create the condition and you try to isolate it. Uh, I've used cling films, I've used... Um, uh, what do you call it, papers they use for baking um, cakes. Um, at the moment, we are, because uh, there is a problem in production of the batteries at the moment, which we are looking into this very, very closely. Even yesterday with the, with the Italian group, we were sitting on the round the table trying to find a solution for this. Because your nanomaterials, um, we're trying to find a way that we can produce a continuous production or do different things with it, that the, the production of the batteries can become literally automatic. Maybe we find a solution in Japan in the coming weeks with the, with the manufacturing company there. But once we learn it, we'll share it, um, we, we will share the knowledge. Uh, but uh, this is something we are looking in at the moment, uh, how to isolate at the point of junctions of the, uh, the, 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 the wires from each other and from not creating reverse uh, flow. 
because um, there are different ways to do it. So the, the, the process is something now that we're going into commercialization by the Italians and the Japanese. We, we have to find a solution. If we don't do, other people will find a solution and we share it. If you find a so solution, you were talking about that picture, Mr. Cash. Uh, 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 with the picture you do you, you sent. Do, do you want me to show that picture, Vince, or is that okay or no? I don't see well, any problem with it. Uh, well, but if you want to speak private, leave it private. If you want to change to to, to what do you call it. To show, because you said you want to discuss it in the in the uh, in the workshop. Yeah, I'd like to discuss it. I mean, I don't. I see it as um, it's an idea for people to try to expand on other people's ideas, and you know, sometimes it just takes that uh, visual and the, that explanation of another device if they get, get another idea for something else so um you've seen the picture then and you do you understand the structure that it's in no i the way it looks to me you put a number of wires next to each other yeah and it's in like a solar film or in uh i don't understand what is what is uh, what is holding it together i don't understand the packaging okay so let me explain the picture and uh, maybe you can you can let us know what what you would interpret this as doing so what we have here is um, a capacitor you keep on getting lost the, your voice keep on getting lost sender can you mute please yeah. Carry Thank on. you. Um, so it's a capacitor in terms of uh, its structure. So I have, uh, let's go from the top to the bottom in that picture. And on the top of it, you'll see nine uh, nano coated wires, uh, which are on top of a piece of aluminum foil, which mm -hmm. is then on top of a piece of nano coated copper foil which then has a piece of plastic in the middle, and then it's, re it's exact. There's a piece of copper nano-coated foil, a piece of aluminum, and then nine more wires that are nano-coated. So uh, what I've noticed with this structure let's, let's, is let, that... Let, let, let's, hello, let's, let's go yes. through it. You have put nine uh, wires next to each other. Yeah. You have put them on a film of aluminium yep. and the aluminium is uh, has got another layer behind it with a copper coated uh, nano layer yeah and then you put a film plastic film or a silicon film for separation that's right and then you repeated the same thing again yes okay carry on In the pictures, uh, at one end, you'll see uh, some aluminum just over top of the wires. Um, I was just doing that to be able to have a good connection uh, so that I could hook my uh, meter up to it easily and not have a bad connection. And the first thing that I noticed um, was that it wasn't producing very much DC voltage at the beginning. But right off the bat, I got one volt of AC. And so what I've done and I've tried to experiment with is that uh, it is uh, almost like a sensor of sorts for a human body because I can touch any part of the circuit that is connected to this and it will increase the AC voltage. So I can hold on to the plastic on the sides, like you see in some of the pictures, and it will go to 2.2 or, or 1.3 volts um, AC. Uh, I can hold the multimeter and it'll also go to 
800 or well, how uh, long how long volts. does it hold how long does it, it stays hold? as long as you touch it so where do you do your connection can you explain this to everyone so the connection is at the uh, aluminum strip on each side so it's uh, in the picture as you can see, there's aluminum strip on one side, and of course, it's exactly opposite the other side. Uh, and it's still part of that same aluminum strip that's uh, that the nano coated wires are on top of. So, yeah, but it's, uh, are you, can, you, can you explain that? Are your aluminum foils connected to each other, or is it just like she's like a, what do you call it, a cake layer? It's just like a cake layer. They are not connected. One layer of aluminium is not connected to another one. So what you are no. doing is just literally measuring uh, voltage between the two aluminiums with a nano layer on one side. Um, nano, what yeah, do you call sandwich. it? Uh, sorry, a sandwich. You're using a sandwich. Okay, carry on. No, so I'm just trying to go into detail that everybody understands what you are doing. Yeah. So the AC that I that I would expect uh, or what I see out of this. Um, I try to attribute it to the magnetic field that's can, that's uh, created from the nano uh, coated uh, coppers, uh, which are interacting with each other with a uh, dielectric in between them. And uh, it's what I see is draining one side and then draining the other side. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's going to a reverse polarity situation. I would just say that it's it's going to a uh, peak to peak measurement on the multimeter. So it, it looks like it it adds to the magnetic field when there's a magnetic field around it, as in the plasma magnetic field of our cells. That's just what I can explain it as. Yeah, but can we extend and expand the knowledge? Um, if we had the camera, I would have shown it to you. We done this about four or five years ago plus. Uh, in 2005, uh, NASA um, had a problem. Uh, it wasn't NASA's problem, but NASA wanted to understand what's happening with this situation with astronauts with their flashing lights in their eyes. I've explained this before in my talks. So they commissioned Washington University to do a research in finding out how the radiation um, in the upper space can be stopped reaching the eye of the, or the liquid in the eye of the astronauts, that they don't get these uh, flashing light photon lights. Um, for this reason, I developed uh, very much what you're talking about. Uh, exactly more or less what you're talking about. And we have seen current flow in the layers. What I've done is, I usually show it if I had the camera, I could have shown it this here. Um, uh, I call it the longest piece of diamond structure ever seen by man. Uh, I took one of the copper um, sheets from the battery, coated it, and then I did the same thing. I took the other aluminium sheet from the same battery, cleaned it. So I've done an aluminium, nano-coated, and a copper line, uh, copper, another copper sheet. Um, this, uh, we tested it through x-rays and other materials absorbs more or less 99% of the um, cosmic rays and converts them into energy. So what we have done now, instead of um, using copper wire, uh, what do you call it, copper strip, which I use, you're using uh, copper wires coated. Um, this gives you a very high AC voltage. Um, I usually carry this in a, in a, like a folded box, I show it. Um, you are correct. What you achieve is you absorb partially the plasma condition of the body, which it comes from the body. If you um, ever test um, your nano wires, uh, it's a very interesting test to do. Keep your um, meters contacts on the wire and just blow at it. 
just blow out the wire in the distance, not directly. I've done that. Like, and you see the voltage goes very high. Uh, it's the energy which you transfer as part of the gans of your body as uh, you blow into the meter. I actually, uh, I did that experiment last week with my maple syrup bottle reactor with a copper coated, <laughs> uh, uh, Brillo, uh, copper coated scrubby pads stuffed inside of it. And they were nano coated, it was all black inside the bottle. And I stuck a brass tube down inside the bottle and I had two electrodes in there uh, taking the voltage at the same time. And you're exactly right. I breathed into it through the tube and the, I figured the CO2, at least, if not the energy from my breath, would make a difference. And I could influence the voltage, definitely, with the, the breath on that device. Yes, but you, you, you find out... Is but that it's not only the breath, it's just the presence. It's when you breathe just out... Uh, yeah, well, um, yeah, it's... Partially, yes, you can be present, it doesn't change that much. But when you breathe, um, because, as I explained in other workshops, that how the material in the lung ch changes, you release part of the material as um, GANS out of your lung. So, uh, because it's in that condition, immediately gets absorbed by the layer. Uh, because it's in the same gravitational magnetic field uh, condition, and the wire is the first thing which, after the between you and the and the material, comes to. It receives that energy. This is this goes back to uh, to to a lot of has a lot of application. Why I did the, or. You can extend it in a, in a way of knowledge seeking uh, further, but with pleasure. Uh, it's the what uh, what we give when we kiss. Is that energy which was explaining uh, in some workshops before? Now you can physically see, measure the amount of energy you give. The, the amount of energy you transfer from one body to another. This, if you get this wire and just blow at it very, and the speed of the blow, the, the, the continuity of the blow, how you blow, it'll give you the term voltage, uh, different readings. You can read sometimes up to 70, 80 mil. Um, but if you stop well, I've reading, seen a couple of hundred. Yes, I was up to a couple hundred myself as well, but uh, the the increase was seventy or eighty mil actually, uh, from yeah. one twenty up to two hundred. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, this is kind of thing you see that then you understand the transfer of energy just by breathing, and this is part partially. If you can get in the clothing like this, you you can see how much energy. Uh, you absorb and how much energy uh, you give into your environment because you can block the process in one way and see how much the voltage comes and then that's what we say uh, this test we did was the reason I say always 80% of the energy we receive is from the environment because of this test we did and now you've done it in a different way you'll realize um, we we receive huge amount of energy from the environment and uh, comes through this test which we did to to make a shielding for a helmet for NASA astronauts. But we receive the environment, but we also provide to we the give. environment. Yes, of course, but the, what we give is in a different strength and what we receive is in a different strength. So, we receive it, we take what we like from it, and then we send it back. The skin of the man, the, the, the three layers of the skin, is very much like exactly what you made, upside down. The plastic is the other, outer skin, the, the, what do you call it, uh, the aluminium is the 
inner middle skin, middle layer and your nano coating is inside with the GANS which converts that into a GANS and it adds into the lymph um, the, the whole structure um, is very, very, very interesting. One of the reasons, in, in the future, I always say, scientists will measure the lymph strength of the miners when they're in the mine, and when they're outside the mine, it's totally different. If you measure, it's through the same principle as you tested. Um, when the cameras open, I've shown this to the knowledge, because they've seen these three layer sheets. You Would can it be measure what increase or a decrease? Um, depends partially on which organ you put it, which part of the body. Uh, depends on the state of the emotion. It depends on the material environment around you. You see, the, let's, let's take this step further, really. we go a little bit in depth in what you made and I'm what we done I'm just thinking about before. the coal mines. Be, uh, yes, um, it, it depends in what environment they are, in what material they're working with. I was th thinking, I was thinking in terms of John Francois's uh, report that came out recently. Uh, have you seen that, Mr. Kesh? I, I sent it. No. Uh, oh, you'll be very interested in that because it's um, his report is about uh, uh, a reactor. Uh, he's taking the uh, magnetic fields in three directions, like uh, from the the readings, and uh, uh, he he does that over time and shows a graph of it. And when people enter into the room, like his uh, young child or himself, when he uses intent and attention. You can see how the magnetic fields are definitely changed on this uh, very nicely laid out graph. Uh, I can post the pictures on uh, live stream, but I... I think it's probably a good idea, Rick. Um, and Mr. Cash, I think you'd be very interested to see that document. No, we uh, see it here. laid out very good. Well, don't forget, yes, yes, we exactly. did the same thing with a knowledge seeker sitting in front of the reactor. We see that exactly. even... That's right. Even the, we have a, we have, I've done a collection since knowledge seekers have left for holidays. Um, the, through the same principle, in the lab we have uh, three windows. One comes from the north and two come from the east. Um, and uh, depending on which side the sun comes into the lab, we get different readings in the morning, daytime and nighttime. Now I make a correction for it because uh, if it's a nice sunny day, the readings are different than when it's at night, when it's just what is the environment totally. So, I have changed a lot of readings into evening and morning sessions. That during the day, we I, I put this thing aside. This this radiation coming and blocking and what you what you detect as a AC voltage. Um, this and this is the energy which comes from outside or it comes from your body. Where this energy as photons or cosmic rays when enter the body of the astronauts in upper layers, where they where they go out even in at the present with all the protections they've created in the present uh, international lab up in the sky, um, they receive still high dosages of radiation. But, um, the, as I explained in other talks, is that um, as you hold your um, unit against your body, you see up to three volts. This is the radiation which is uh, um, created. You have to measure the current. The current is very much different. It's very, very low. This is uh, the the problem very with this. Uh, yeah, the, the the problem is not the voltage. The problem is the current. This low current yes. is very much is very much at the current level of the neural system of the human body. This right, is right. The, the max I've seen it, charging a capacitor was twenty five microfarads or microamps. Yes. Sorry. So yeah. it's very this very is low. The problem. Yeah. Our body doesn't work on kilowatts. 
our neural system work on that level. So what happened is that uh, why uh, we offered this to NASA and to the to the, this guy with the professor who was supposed to do the research for NASA in Washington University was that mm, these fields as they enter in millions and millions and millions of them, literally every second per square meter. Now you get a human body and you get this radiation coming in. Part of these radiations get absorbed by the skin. Then partly the skull absorbs part of the radiation. Then you have the, um, the brain structure that this radiation goes through it. And partially these radiations are absorbed by the brain. Then partially whatever is left which does not enter directly through the eye, enters the liquid of the eye, and part of this becomes a photon. And you see it as a light. The problem is, these radiations, if you do not stop them in deep space, in no time will go, especially at high speeds you go, and the, the way you work, they will literally, with the voltage they create, and the current, very low level current they produce, lead to a lot of disabilities, and a lot of, um, what do you call it, um, disorders, psychological disorders. Because they create a current, on the current of the level of the emotional part of the brain. And then, the physical part takes that energy as an information coming from the emotion and reacts to it. Then, this low current emotion surge has to be, uh, as an information, be sent to the part of the rest of the physical part to become actions. And when there is such a huge surge of information, as I explained before, in the back of your skull, there is a switch, it's literally a capacitor, there is a blocker, there is a switch that at a certain level of information, current go through the spinal cord, it cannot take, so it switches off. Then you have coma. And if this process carries on in a switching on and off, you get, para, you get Parkinson shocks or epileptic shocks, depends. So, um, this is one of the reasons on the health side, we look very deeply into coma and mental disorders like MS and uh, ILS and other factors. Because of what you literally made in a piece of a uh, unit, uh, with a, a nano coating that absorbs your energy and you can see the high voltage, very low current in the, in the space, uh, this is why a lot of astronauts are taken off the scene. Especially the Russian astronauts we do not see. They are not in public eye. Astronauts who, who stayed, initial astronauts who stayed in the, in the first uh, laboratories for six months or so. Um, the amount of radiation absorbed by their body, by their brain, and converted into information, has led to mental disorders. So, so I have a question. Uh, uh, so you you understand with the little test you've done how deep the foundation work goes and what we've done and what we are looking at. The current, because of the current, very low current, this current, amazing enough, is at the level enough as the current which the emotional part releases as the plasma to the physical part of the body for uh, for its work. And the body, the brain section, the physical part of the brain takes this and order because it receives it, it matches to the to the emotional part information as an order and it carries it out. Uh, this, so if that's this, the case, yeah. then 
with this sort of uh, device that I show with be able to touch it and, and receive or just see the voltage, um, that means it's, it's obviously taking it from ourself and just like you said, if on that same level, would that not be a way to be able to uh, remove that excess energy if this was tuned to the right energies? Yeah, but, uh, but um, this, this is used, we are using this for a specific health sections. This is part of you, you have touched as part of the medical side, which I teach uh, or I develop now. Um, you got to realize you cannot release it if you do not give it back equal what it needs. Then it goes internally and takes from the lymph what it needs. Uh, it's a very delicate situation. Uh, right, the, just remove the wrong thing. Yes, yes. You create a wrong environment in that position. So. This is why people like Elia and other doctors who want to join the foundation, we teach this very in a very, very, very um, correct way. It has to be done. They have to understand uh, the structure of it. They have to understand. The problem we'll have in the future, as I see it even now, and I try to resolve it with Ivan being here, is that we need medical people with a good knowledge of medical science like Ivan, uh, with a good knowledge of building systems and the reasons why they build system for what they system. Because doctors like Elia cannot build systems. But doctors like Ivan, who can understand the translating information from one side to another, and having the ability and the knowledge to build the systems for it, can do that for them. Uh, yeah. And uh, this, this, this is one of the future problems. Uh, we've done a lot of work in this area. I'll, I'll attribute that to being a dentist, working with mm, his hands. But, uh, um, yeah, but you have surgeons too. Uh, the surgeons are the same as dentists. A lot of surgeons do a lot of artwork, the sculpture, because they have such a gorgeous uh, and steady hand. Uh, the, the general practitioners, usually a few of them have outside hobbies. But you find dentists and the surgeons usually do these kind of things. Because they, they, they are used to, they test their own abilities sometimes. Uh, but uh, uh, what you have done, or what you have shown, that's, I was very glad to see you putting that out. And when Rick showed it to me, or sent it to me, I thought this is a point uh, uh, to, to go into some detail about both now the application of the technology, as you go with application of the health section. It's very important. The way the, the knowledge seeker and these programs are building up is absolutely perfect. Because you bring the, the structure in and we add to the knowledge. It's not a one-way system anymore. So, what, what, let me just say something please, Rick. With what you've shown, you have actually created the skin of the man. If you could put liquid on one side of your nano layer, you will see ganses releasing in a very beautiful way. And those ganses become, if you can do it in a correct way, they become amino acid. They are at the same energy plasma of the amino acid. So the production of um, amino acid uh, controlled mainly under the skin by the skin itself, in what it released to it. So, go a step further, <coughs> if you can put your system upside down, and on one side, create a gel liquid condition, and you see what kind of cancers you get. And then you will understand the process of the creation. That was my next... Effect of it. Yeah. You will see it, and then report to us. But something you got to do, if you can do, <coughs> put a thermometer just on that layer and measure the temperature. But here's something I have done that I, that I will say, and I haven't seen anything of it yet. I have used uh, my own um, spit on the nano-coated, and I did see a dramatic increase in the DC voltage at that point. Yes, because you block, um, you transfer everything into the plasma condition. 
the reason you see AC in your sandwich is because you transfer the plasma energy, which is a DC, to AC through resistance across the layers. Right. AC appears. AC appears only when there is an interaction in the matter condition. Your DC, whatever you see DC, no increase in AC is the condition of the plasma. So all the energy transfer is in plasma, plasmatic condition. Right, and because this it was a human bodily fluid, it would have been <coughs> basically pure plasma. Yes, that's why you see increase in this. Understand the process. This is what I try to explain. Understand the process, then you can add to the knowledge. Um, your AC only comes when the gravitational magnetic fields have to go through a matter barrier. It goes so much up and down till it finds a way through. It's very much like a, a miner. Uh, you hit a stone, you go around the stone till you can get behind the stone. That to me, this is what AC is, that's what the frequency is. Till you find a way that you can penetrate. And uh, in a plasma condition, you don't need penetration. We have an AC in a plasma, from one plasma to another. But that's a plasmatic AC, is beyond man's understanding. It's far beyond man's understanding, at this point. The same as you have, AC in a material condition. What is the frequency? Why do you get the sinusoidal wave? That you can penetrate. You find where you can penetrate. How you can penetrate from one atomic structure into another. We have the same thing in the plasma, you will see it. You will see huge AC currents in the interaction of the plasmas. But you're too, too, what do you call it? In the, this is very too early stages. Well, I was thinking to... about using a capacitor to change the, the plasma into a electron like that we can use for power. The easiest way to do it is a rechargeable battery. Yes, I have used if a rechargeable do... battery and charged it with this device. Yes, if you, if you use a rechargeable battery, um, because the rechargeable batteries have both AC capacity and a DC capacity. So, when they absorb the DC as a plasma, because of the physical matter structure in the battery, they convert part of it into the, into, um, what do you call it, AC current. You can tap on both. This we shown years ago, the, but the capability of the plasma reactors on AC and DC. Right, now I think uh, Brett also wants to say something about this, as uh, I did get the idea, and we did talk a lot about this uh, device. Um, I, he got the idea from him to create this one, so I think he wants to talk to us about it as well. Yeah, it's a fantastic what you've done, uh, and thank you very much for sharing the knowledge this way. <clears throat> this has a you're, you're huge, huge, huge me... application. In, in medical application. I just wanted to say something about the understanding of the structure and why I did it. The inside nano layer, I used wires because I didn't have any foil like Vincent did, but the structure that's grown in that foil acts as a uh, isolator of charge and it's actually, it should be blocking the flow. As you said, it goes around. So if you change the structure on that, you'll change the, uh, change what it does. And then the uh, aluminum foil on top connected to those outer, what he has, nine of them. I just made one the size originally of a, about a nickel and just connected one wire to bring the energy into the system and hold it inside the middle. Can you repeat that again? Sure. I had a piece of little thin paper cardboard, extremely thin in the middle. Then I had the nano wires on the outsides of that, but I didn't have any foil, so I used the wires, but ideally you would use a foil or, or some kind of coated foil that's structured so it isolates the charge from going up and down. It can only go sideways, not up and down. Then I put the aluminum foil on top of that, and then I put one wire on each side of the aluminum foil, 
to bring in the energy and, and have it stored into the system. But it still did the same thing. It still had the same effect, which was uh, yeah. fantastic to see, and which is why I started creating this with the foil, because you know, even with the wires that are cut, let's say I take a nano coated copper wire, just like you see on top of that. Uh, this is the first, the, one of the did it first. I cut that into, uh, I think it was uh, three or five uh, pieces and uh, wrapped them in tin foil uh, and then put the a, a nano coated copper uh, wire on top of that. So same exact same structure, but uh, with the wires instead of a foil, and I still received uh, AC voltage. So it, it, the structure, um, it seems that as long as you have that structure with the nano-coated and the, the non-nano-coated uh, on one side and the same on the other with the dielectric in between, uh, it looks like you can change around that structure but still receive yeah the same if you uh, let voltage. me let me don't go too far don't go too far let's let's expand it in different direction let's explain it in a different way get yourself and put two opposite polarity magnets in front of each other yeah you get two magnets two circular magnets with a hole or without a hole and put two north poles or two south poles, the best result you get when you put the two north poles facing each other. Put them at a the distance where you, you, you find them, they're comfortable, they don't jump or, flow, or fly out. And then get a piece of aluminium foil or a copper foil and go right down through the center between the two you'll find out the magnets will jump on air together. I measure the current right, in that that's the eddy current. Yes, but measure the current or put it up and see how they do. Because you convert the magnetic, plasmatic magnetic field because uh, into, a, into a AC current, because now they have to cross a matter. The, the, the problem with, um, with this is, um, I go two steps backwards. To you, as a normal understanding of the two magnets, you look at it, okay, there are two, opposite, two similar poles facing each other. But, at the same time, the fields from the back of the magnet is in motion towards the other side too. It's a huge difference between using rectangular and a square magnets and using circular magnets. With the circular magnets, you have a mono-direction flow. At the face of the interaction. But, at the same time, you have the, the similar poles still linking to as well. So, in between the two, you don't only have the repulsion, but you have the attraction from the back of the magnet to the front of the other magnet too. So, it's a plasmatic condition. This is what, another point that the world of science uh, have always ignored it, because you always look at one side. Right, they always the just see the magnet, point. period. Yeah. Start understanding the process. This is what I right, explained, you, you say, where that... I have a question. Yeah, let me explain, let me add to knowledge slightly, because this is important, I think. Um, um, there is a big question mark, where does the magnetic field changes from the north to south in the planet? Nowhere, because it's a flaw. Because the man could not understand the flow of magnets, they think somewhere in the center of the, let's say, Earth, the South Pole changes to North Pole. No, it doesn't. It's the flow of the same magnetic field. As it goes in, it comes out. It doesn't change anywhere in between. This is another la uh, misunderstanding in the world of physics at the moment. So, it's the same with your magnet. Your magnet 
does, there is no cross point where it goes to negative, positive, or what you call north and south. It depends where the flow increases. At a point where you see the change is where the magnetic field has is just increased itself in by absorbing other fields inside the material or inside the plasma within the center ring if you have a hollow 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 ring magnets. So from now on, when you work with these things, you have created look at the structure you created. You put a nano coppers wires, you put an aluminium sheet, and then you put a copper coat, uh, what do you call it, sheet behind it. You have created the same position as two magnets. You said eddy current. But your eddy current is both in both directions, positive, negative, negative, positive from both sides. Because a nano layer, as we said, is the atomic structure of plasmas sitting next to each other. They all can't be North Pole. One has to be in North to the South, to the North to the South. So either way, you're producing energy, you're releasing energy to it. And extend the knowledge, understand exactly what is happening in your sandwich you made. You have two plasmas of nano-coated material, there are plasmas, but they, are, they have to sit at the matter level. Then you have a you have a um, you have an aluminium foil in between. In a chemical reaction, you have the position from material into the plate. That's why the batteries run out. When the chemical reaction is completed, you throw the battery away. With these nano layers, you can never throw the battery away because it's a live three-dimensional transfer of gravitational magnetic field. It's the same as putting two magnets on either side, and you said it's an eddy current. You have a continuous eddy current right, flowing in like... You understand now? That's right. Yeah, no, it, it's uh, just like saying a magnet will run out of energy at some point in time. It's not going to happen. Never does. Not going to happen. Because because your nano layers are dynamic, they absorb energy from the side you don't consider behind them, which is not the facing the aluminium foil. So in a way they get it from right. outside, they feed it into inside. And when but you the, because take of it, the matter in between, you have you, a, you have two you have two fields that are interacting with each other with the matter. So Yes. Now you understand. Mm -hmm. Now you understand. Try. So, which to brings understand. me yeah, carry to on. another point. Sorry, um, is I have another device that has a bunch of wires in it in a different fashion, but it had water inside. And um, I sent a picture around. I'm, I'm not sure if we talked about this last week or not. I don't think so. Um, where I have a uh, meter hooked up that shows both a positive and a negative voltage and we know in terms of physics if you're measuring a electron you can't have an electron moving one way and the other way at the same time so that was a confirmation on, on that device that there is a plasma in that device so what to bring it back to this this part is that the dielectric can be either a matter in terms of a plastic or a piece of paper or it can be in terms of water or space and air can you repeat that well the the dielectric matter right as we see yeah. as the plastic in between as the sandwich mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. can be paper can be anything that can is a matter that doesn't yeah matter. any matter will do how about silicone it, spray? Including water. Do you do you want to know? Do you want to know a better one? Do you want to to see a plasmatic current? Sure. I think the uh, answer would be yes. <laughs> put <laughs> put a nano copper wire or copper sheet cover it with GANS and put another copper sheet on top and then measure. A GANS sandwich. GANS sandwich. <laughs> then you see partially the transfer. 
and then you understand the interaction between the universes. We see this in the interaction between the universes. Partially you see this in interaction on upper layer of, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, um, gaseous planets, which they have nano gans material. The hexagonal shape comes from the balance of the matters. If you could make it transparent, you will see hexagonal shape in your ganses. They structure themselves into hexagonal a diamond structure to create a stability. This, this, um, you, in the future, they will, the, the scientists which they will travel the, into deep space, you will see this in in between near to stars. The knowledge is not there for man to see, but when you come to near two stars which are very close to each other, the plasma will create this condition at the interface. The um, this, these are gateways that in the space will be used in the future. Um, but uh, if you take your knowledge a step further in what you understood today, now put a nano layer, you made enough ganses, try to use a different gans than the copper, if you're using two coppers, that uh, you will see the interaction, and then use the gans copper in between as a sandwich. Now you don't have any matter interference, now you get a plasma current. This plasma current is hugely powerful, it's extremely powerful, but you have to be able to measure it at the level you stand. Use, uh, the reason I said don't use copper, use something else as a GANS, because the difference will allow huge potential difference between the layers, the GANS and the layer. You need to create a potential difference, and the, the potential difference you create in the GANS, then it is there. Right, I think we talked about this on the 22nd. Yeah. So you start so seeing uh, the part of carry on. So I was going to say, as we said back then, um, it stops some of the the fields from entering in the plasma of the nano coating and allows more fields of of the others strengths to uh, come into the nano coating which would be an increase in the amount of plasma strength and instead of it being distributed you see you are you are at the moment used to matter current plasma today you learned to work with a plasma current and the plasma current thank you and the plasma current uh, uh, my wife just walked in with a breakfast she's laughing her head off doesn't matter um, the plasma current is totally different than um, the material current. Yeah. That, that actually ties in exactly with a question I'd like to bring up that t that's what we're talking about here, which is uh, with Jean-Francois's experiment with his reactor, when his uh, f uh, female child came in, the magnetic fields reversed on the uh, reactor. And uh, I think it, the same thing happened when his wife came in. <laughs> and I'm wondering, Armin, Armin, is that... You, is you that is that a factor in running yes, a reactor? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You will understand more. Get your dog walking and see what happened to it. Because, uh, okay. you know, the Foundation's mascot is a little dog we have here. And he comes and he goes everywhere. And I keep an eye whenever he goes around the reactors. And he'll, it's very interesting how he does. And how it affects the, the reading. Um... Yes, we, we create, that's why we are in opposite, and in a way, you have a male and a female. It's the plasmatic condition, as I said before, eyes and uh, 
ears and the senses are absolutely useless. Your, he could measure what we should measure with our, what do you call it, with our emotional part of the body. So the detector feels the change which comes in. I've done some of these tests, it's very interesting. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's correct in the way it is and how it sits. But maybe today we, we go in, in a, in a, what do you call it, uh, a big leap in the, in the science that you can, how to create a plasma current. And this current is so powerful, if you can tap into it, that um, in so many ways uh, is one of the most powerful generators you ever know. But you have to know how to change this energy into um, into condition uh, into material or energy you want in a matter level. Conversion is the is the process is understanding. So you got to to see you got to understand what this can do and what energy it brings you. This is one of the reasons why when uh, Yukoko used the material in Fukushima, you saw instant reduction in in the uh, um, what do you call it in the uh, uh, radiation level. It's not a magic. Now you come to the point which was done three months ago. Gamma rays are a field of strength. And these nano layers are transfers or absorbers of the field. Uh, we so, have a question from the live stream. Would CO2 GANs work as the sandwich material or uh, work as a layer between the anything. copper? You can use anything, of course. Why not? But, well, you mentioned uh, something other than copper might be better in, in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You but, can use any GANs you make. Good evening. I have a Gabriel question about the magnets, Mr. Kesh. The uh, I talked to Armin a week ago or so about these ma magnet configurations I make, and when I put another magnet on over top of it, it creates like a little spinning vortex that continuously goes, and the magnet will go around forever. Or if you have a spherical ball magnet, you put in the center of it, it will spin continuously forever. I was thinking maybe I can try some experiments with it, if you have any suggestions. Um, no, does it, try. Does it try, spin? Try. Does it spin if well, you, you don't talking hold about, it? Like if you, uh, try, yeah. try. Uh, try to understand why it spins come out of the schizophrenic of being matter, becoming one state. Understand why. Why, why it, it, it rotates. It's a spherical, it has north and south. This is what you tell me is fair, uh, rotates. Is this is exactly how rotation of the planetary system and the stars are done? Due to the gravity, due to magnetic field of the environment. You create the environment and you put a magnet, which a, a entity, which is a plasma itself. It all continuously chases to find the next connection and the balance, so it gives it creation. This is the principle by way, I said one day, I'll show you how you create a rotation in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a reactor without using any vacuum pumps. Uh, so, uh, you have to just don't look, I put a magnet and it rotates. You know, you understand, try to translate your knowledge between the Gans and, uh, and, uh, and the matter. 
all the ganses you see, all the copper oxide gans, all the CO2 gans you see, if you put them on the microscope and enlarge them, you see them, they're all rotating. They are rotating like mad. Because other materials, other ganses around them, they're all magnetic, gravitationally based. So they are forever rotating to find their balance. <coughs> and this is how um, cosmos and universal rotations are created. As a GANS rotates because of, as, as you put your magnets and you see this thing rotating like mad in the middle, now you put a stars. You see, that's why they rotate. You put the galaxies. That's why the galaxies rotate in the way they do. They are dynamic. Now increase it to universes. That's why our universe is dynamic. There is no so difference. So if I put some GANs on top of the magnet and then put it in there, it'll see some more effects then? Have a look. Try. Try. Be interesting. I'll try that. Try. I'll try see. it. Try. Try to confine, try to confine uh, Gans in like a transparent ball and tune to its magnetic field. You might do it and nothing happens because you haven't tuned into it. Try to tune into the gravitational magnet, you will see all the liquid inside will rotate like crazy. This is how the inner core of this planet rotates. This is how the rotation is done in the center of the stars. You are getting into the essence of creation, but you have to understand it. Just don't copy it. Look at, don't look at the material side. You are getting into the full structure. This is why we switched off our uh, motors in the lab. Because now there are three reactors around and one reactor in the center. So none of the fields is just about equal, the same to find balance. So one is pushing the other one, so we have a dynamic environment. <coughs> um, strange enough is that now, as uh, talking about this, as we have three sets, the reactor, the set which is a GANS material, is dropping its power lower and lower every day. Now we are at, um, we start, I think, at 1.2, 1.4, 1.3. Now it's at about 0.81. As we feed the center cores, we provide more fields, the ganses are absorbing it, and in absorbing it, they are getting in the reaching a point that they are not taking any power from the supply. And this happens only with the two reactors which are closest to the other sets. And in turn, they bring the other ones into balance or they put pressure on them. Try to understand the structure for... Now today you understand how uh, cosmic rotation is done, but you do it in a material state. When you do it in a matter state, you have uh, frequencies, you have a um, AC condition. Because you convert part of the plasma of the magnets you have on the top, holding it, rotating it, continuously into AC, because it has to become matter to be able to interact. Not matter, it has to become in matter strength level to be able to interact with the ball. Partially the field interact, but partially as the field interact, they release the energy into the matter of the ball. Then you understand how easily you can make systems, which you don't need no motors. Motors is a man created to create rotation. Now, with your test, and if you can do it with the GANs, you find out how the universe makes its motors. The next question. Basically, what okay, we were I talking... Okay, I do have another question then. Oh, go ahead, Lidmo. That's okay, yeah. Uh, that sends me back to the history. Uh, about a year ago, I was playing with twisted nano-coated wires. Um, trying to figure out, always we say that the BTS patients get individual treatment by the CAPS. 
and I was trying to make a sensor which basically is going to sense the plasmatic field of the blood and adjust the cup versus the blood itself. That's a sensor for sensing the missing plasma, I would say. Diabetic comes from the emotional part of the brain, not the physical part. Uh, the diabetic, diabetic two, even diabetic one, comes from the emotional part, mm, and then it transfers itself into into diabetic because they change the environment of the, the blood changes. And um, insulin and what you say, the pancreas working to do things, these are reactions to what the emotional part has done. And then what you do, you take insulin and say there's something to do with the pancreas. What you see as the work of the pancreas, or you see as the work of the other limbs on the kidney, these are only to react to what the emotional part has already uh, created. It's not physical, and you cannot detect it through, you have to always... For sure, um, emotional part, if it's sorted, diabetic doesn't exist. So, the work of the pancreas, the work of um, other glands in the body, because it's not only one gland which controls the sugar, there's a combination of three, wor three glands working together. Uh, but in the, in the present world of science, you only do look at one glance and then you have the use of insulin. If you change the emotion, if you make yourself an emotional cup, then you find out everything with your physicality and the sugar level changes. We've done this about, oh, eight years ago, nine years ago. And you can prove it. You'll find, as I said, a lot of people with like a COPD, um, uh, with other illnesses, uh, or people who lose a lot of weight won't go due to the stress on the physical side of the body. The the um, they create a diabetic condition. But if you go to the root of it, is the emotional part which controls. I understand that, but uh, we were talking about the BT cure and talking about cups for the BT people, and they were supposed to be individual for each person. So I was trying to figure out how I can measure it in order to make it universal and change the cup consistency yeah. to each person individual, I would say. Uh, uh, you cannot make it because people are made of different fields. Even though we all have amino acid and we all have uh, uh, the same five fingers and two eyes, nothing in our body is the same. None of us have exactly the same thing. Not even the twins. So. You cannot make a universal cup because uh, you have these things needs targeting and understanding. And mainly the targeting understanding comes from the person understanding where the emotion comes from. Why the emotion comes from and what is the cause of the, <clears throat> the anger, the hate, the acceptance of the condition, trying to fight a condition. Um, we don't see that much diabetic with ILS and MS. We see diabetic with COPD. So basically, of, the, the, the hate because is it was the... accepted condition. This is accepted condition because the person who pre-ebbs or subconsciously 
wants to to take his life has already accepted he himself he doesn't have any fighting has no emotional stress because emotionally he has set the scene very strange this is part of the teaching on the medical side will I will I will teach in the in the future you hardly see emotion you hardly see sorry diabetic with uh, emotional diseases even though they say no I'm very stressed because of I have but whatever whatever because they said the scene subconsciously the body has accepted this is what I'm targeting for doesn't matter what you do but with somebody who's got a COPD, the lung damage, they fight because they can't understand the condition and the, the, the anger, the anguish from physically not breathing. Then that stress causes a diabetic. There is a very fine distinction between diabetic and uh, uh, other diseases because when the physicality cannot match, why, why do you use insulin? Why is it to do with the sugar? Sugar is energy level. When you're short of energy, what are you looking for? The fast conversion of energy is through uh, sugar, through a hydrogen, CH bond. Where does the H go? Emotional part is the fast user of energy. So, the physical part has to match. Somebody who has ILS, even though they get stressed after getting the ILS, but the mind has already said, this is what I accepted, what I'm going to do. The, the condition of uh, diabetic comes to go to the real reason of the stress, real reason of the emotion which created that stress. This is, this goes back to, I was talking, and I explained this before, and I was talking to um, a couple of people um, this week and last week, and it's the same thing as, um, as we talked about, bipolarity and ADHD, or ADD, attention deficiency, or attention hyperactivity. That ADD is not an illness. ADD is control. And because you cannot change somebody to, to kick the habit of control, doctors cannot stop people with ADD. You can sedate them and then say it works, but you cannot control because ADD <clears throat> is with physical kingship, attention deficiency. What do the attention deficiency people do? They don't have attention deficiency. You who are watching them, you are a fool. You have not understood. What happens? He wants attention. So, he does anything to get your attention. Emotionally, psychologically, physically, sexually, any way you want. So, we call it, the guy is the ADD. I say, no, he wants to be the king and wants me to be a slave. And when I explain to the ADD people, I'm not your slave, you cannot fool me, and this is what you do, they understand very easily in the family, they fight to keep that position. And the families who come with me with the ADD, <coughs> we don't make them a cop, we don't give them something for changing their situation. We explain, this is a natural process. He wants to be the controller, it's you who have allowed him, now he will not let go. But, why does ADD, or attention deficiency, attaches itself to hyperactivity? They call it ADHD. Because, if I cannot control you to be the king emotionally, in a relationship, a woman and a man, a child, a mother and a father, the child gets the attention through ADD, by getting angry, being quiet, because, you know, somebody goes quiet, say, why are you quiet, what's wrong, what has happened? Now, she's the center of attention, she's the king. All your attentions are his, or hers. This is a kind of ADD, attention deficiency. Now you get the ADHD, attention deficiency, hyperactivity. 
if you are in an environment where there are too many people and they don't know you, what happens? You still want to get the attention which you got at home, but you can't. So how do you control? You kick. For one second they are watching you kicking, then the attention is for a few seconds on that kick. Then you throw the bucket, then you jump, then you do something else, continuously trying to keep attention to yourself. Is this hyperactivity? No, this is a kingship. That's why they can't find any medicine for ADHD. Because they don't understand. This is a kingship. This is a control. It's a psychological problem. It's not a mental problem. This is a control of me being in charge. This is what I say to all the parents who come to me. You know, first thing in the morning, this is what I've done with my children for years. You see them, give them a cuddle, tell them you love them, they are the center of their life, your life. They receive what they need. You don't get this. But if there is a conflict between the mother and the father, and the mother uses the point of ADD, to control the rest of the family to a child, then you come to mother munching. She uses that child and its behavior to show there is existence for me, he is ill, I have to look after it. So he feeds another illness now with the mother. This is part of the process that with this technology, we have tested so much that we can separate what is illness, what is physical illness, what is emotional illness, and it's nothing illness, but it's just pretend. So, anybody who tells you, I'm an ADD, tell him, what do you need that we give you? You find out there is no more ADD. But, then, because they are in the habit of being in control, then they carry on with somebody else. So, they are ADD in one house, and they are intelligent and very good people in the other houses. Because in that house, they get all the attention they need. ADD starts... ...maybe earlier, to age of five and seven. And then it becomes a habit. Usually, usually, usually comes out of the conflict between the mother and father, or through an illness. When a child becomes ill, then it's a center of attention. Oh, you're there, everything is his, and then he sees the illness as a way of control. Mama, I have a headache. Oh, you can have this. Mama, I have this. Oh, you can have that. Mama sits next to the child. And then ADD is fed by, usually by the mothers to carry on, because they try to give love to a, a offspring, that it gives them a reason for existence, that I exist too. So they feed the ADD because they try to say, I exist by looking after the sick person, they feed the ADD further. So now the child becomes the, 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 the household chief. You see ADD, majority with the second or a third child, where they are fighting for their position, they can't get it, so they create, a, and usually comes by a small sickness, they get sick, high temperature, and they are coming out, they see all the attention paid to them, now the whole house goes around them, oh, now I'm in charge, I'm important. And then they develop it over time to <coughs> ADD. So, Anybody who says, I'm ADHD, or my child got ADHD, explain to them, very simply. AD means, that it, there is no attention, it's actually a kingship. And when you're a king, you want to confirm your existence, you continuously control, do things, and people have to watch what you're doing, so you're in position. And to be able physically to see what you're doing, then, they say he's hyperactive. Hyperactivity comes because he wants to be in control. There is no sickness called ADHD, it does not exist. It's a kingship, which, and they make all sorts of uh, chemicals and pharmaceuticals, who also seem to sedate them. 
but you sedate the physical side, <coughs> you don't stop the kingship side, which is a control part of the brain. This is what it goes, I said before, why do we get presidents who, after two terms, they still fight to be a president, and after even they finish the presidency, they still look for a position to still have that value, they become UN ambassadors, they become this and they become that, because they still want to be that center of attention. And they won't let the seat of kingship to go anywhere, at least they're attached to it somehow. It's the same thing with a child. ADHD does not exist. AD, attention, attention deficiency means you are full, I'm controlling you. Anybody says, you have, I have an AD, says, well, you want me to be your slave? And anybody says, I have an ADHD, says, you're, you're crazy. Because you want, you don't get what you want, you continuously distract us. So, to be able to distract me, you have to be active. So, I call it hyperactivity. There's no hyperactivity, it's just you want to be in charge, you don't get it. When they kick the bucket, the next second you're falling off the chair, the next second you're pushing something, the next... So I have to continuously watch what you're doing to be your slave. So, ADHD does not exist. The same thing goes, you measure the blood sugar of the ADHD. None of them have diabetic. They are the most calmest people, internally because you are a servant. And when they don't get it, they pretend they are sick. Now they are sick, you have to pay them attention. So, they are back on the king of kingship. Diabetic level of sugar gives a very good indication of a lot of things, what is not happy emotionally, physically, I need energy to satisfy the emotional energy. Go back to how you breathe, how I explained, no oxygen ever crosses the lung. The availability of the hydrogen is the same as the availability of hydrogen in the, in, in, in the sugar. Immediate release for absorption and consumption by the emotional part of the brain and partially the physical part of the brain. So, why do you have, uh, why are you diabetic? Sort out what you are not feeding and what you are using too much, on the emotional to interaction with your physical part. You won't have a diabetic within three months, because the body has to adjust to it. Next question. There is something I have to explain in this respect. Um, those who are medical orientated and listen to this uh, workshops, um, in the world of uh, science, when we put people into sleep or whatever, or we give them oxygen, we call them, we give them oxygen, oxygen mask, and give them oxygen tank. Um, these oxygens, um, they convert in the lung down to nitrogen, and then the process starts because they are of the higher order, they can go to a lower order. So, the oxygen which you give as 100% oxygen or whatever, 95% whatever oxygen they give to people in the operating room or whatever, these, uh, if you mix some nitrogen in these oxygen content, you'll find out the process will be much easier without any problem. This is one of the reasons sometimes people wake up in the, uh, during the operation and they are conscious of the operation. Especially <clears throat> people who are in um, delivery rooms uh, with cesarean, because the emotional part is the interaction continuously knowing giving a birth. A lot of doctors by giving oxygen or sedation do not bring, the, they give the sedation but the, the woman still feels the whole thing because that oxygen conversion does not allow part of the neural system to go totally in its, in a position of not, on what do you call it, bypassing. So, in the future, uh, when the scientists understand more, they will add nitrogen into the oxygen mixture. This is partially why when you go into the, into the, what do you call it, as um, you dive into deep seas, you got what they call a nitrogen bend. 
because scientific world has not understood that no oxygen ever crosses. So you have that uh, because of the creation of the reversal of to putting too much uh, condition energy that it reverses back itself and it cannot reverse back to the oxygen, so you get a nitrogen bill. I'll explain this in detail in the future. But uh, understand why and how you create your own diabetic. Diabetic one is a stress within the womb of the mother, when mother in passing, being in charge of the body, cannot, uh, she transfers her emotional part through the blood to the child, physically. So you are born with it, you call it diabetic one. In a way, it is very hard to sort a diabetic one, because you did not carry part of it, partially is your mother who has given it to you. If you can reconnect the child to the blood of the mother, to the vein and the mother, then uh, maybe you can sort out diabetic one in an easier way. But diabetic one can be done, is created the condition because when is the child is in the womb of the mother, the position is tight, the womb is tight, there is anger between the father and mother, mother is under stress. So you create that onto the body physically, the child feels the stress emotionally and then it transfers you born as a diabetic one. Diabetic one is very hard to control, to change, because we don't understand the process of it in the womb of the mother. And diabetic two comes because of your own stress, which you need a lot of energy, well, energy fast energy comes through the sugar, delivered as a hydrogen energy into the body, which comes through the insulin, and then you got to understand the process that in the condition of the uh, diabetic, the sugar level or conversion of the matter into the sugar CH level or CH level of the hydrogen of the CH combination is transferred across the wall into the blood from the insulin. Because you don't get it through your hydrogen, through your lungs, so the conversion comes through the way, the same way as um, you transfer uh, minerals as the, uh, what do you call it, as insulin into matter into your blood. That conversion is done through the stress conversion of the neurosystem on your blood vessels. You convert part of the CH in the insulin into sugar and the use of insulin in your body. Um, this, this is all to do with the lymph. The lymph conversion comes across the wall into CH and then into the sugar combination for the fast use of energy from the, from the lymph. Then you get, uh, you get all the problems with the diabetic. If you can change two things, you can sort out the diabetic very fast, very quickly. And we've seen it in our test, we have shown this is exactly what happens. You can interfere with the production of the physical part of the production of the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, uh, diabetic, through the stomach, absorption of energy through your lips. Next question. What is MIDD? That's exactly what you gave the reply earlier. Mother inherited diabetes. Yes, this is to do with the mother energy. You find out a lot of people with um, ADD um, uh, have uh, a huge problem. Um, the, the problem is that um, it goes in the psychological point of a um, male and a female. There is a you you'll find in the, in the, in the in the families where there is a first child a daughter or the second child is a daughter. The father by by our nature we see females as weak and we are there to protect the way we protect our wives or our sisters. When we have a daughter as a child, this instinct becomes much more stronger because you feel it 
uh, as a um, beautiful creature in your hand, cannot defend itself. As a boy, we look at it that how oh, it grows up and becomes, you know, a man and this is it, blah, blah. But as a girl, we look at it as a beautiful thing which now we are responsible for. A mother, a wife, a sister is something which has been there. We have become responsible for them, of care for them, because it's part of our process of environment. But when you give life to a, to a girl, you see this thing, now you're responsible for. And the same emotion sits as you see, this is weak and I have to protect it. And you fall in love because we have to protect it, you care more for it. A lot of mothers, we see this a lot in Keshe Foundation and Health section. A lot of mothers don't understand. And they misplace their love. What they see is that, how come now he loves this woman and not me? Now, the daughter they gave life to becomes a competition becomes a mistress. Mothers who understand they give in love and life to the same creature as a man they love, they nourish the daughter. She becomes the point of interaction between the both sides. She becomes the center of love and care for her family. But the mothers who see this woman as a mistress, this little thing as a mistress, because he used to pay more attention to me, now all his attention is for her, all the attention goes to look after her, what about me? you find them in conflict with their daughter. Because now I have to get rid of this uh, bird out of the nest. And this, this develops to more and more. And then you see conflict in the house. In these cases, you find diabetic in the daughter. Because emotionally she cannot understand it. And it causes a lot of emotional stress, which manifests itself in a later time as diabetic too. But the cause of it is the mother, who sees the daughter as a competition. Then, in some cases, mainly, mainly with boys, because the father sees the son as a point of, I'm going to play football with or whatever, in a point of weakness, when the child is sick, that I can it's another man, I can love, the mother makes the child to stay sick, that there is a reason for her existence. This is called mother munging. Go on the internet and read about it. The child is never sick. But mother psychologically makes the child to be sick, in a condition of sickness, that she proves her own existence that I exist, I need to exist, because I have to look after a sick child. You see ADD beginning, and ADHD beginning, and then in the future, because they grow up in the society, and people's society doesn't accept the behavior of ADHD, because they don't have time for a guy to be their king, they, have, they want to be their king themselves, they end up with diabetic too. And then you find mother with the psychological problems, and then all sorts of other things which goes with it. So, in the process, the whole uh, the whole structure of the health has a background to it, which is uh, uh, most of the mm, diabetic one and diabetic two in the later stages. If you go back to the root of it, you'll find out exactly where you started. And when the person understands it, you find that diabetic over a few weeks and months disappears. Because you sort out the problem and it's a structure at its root. Diabetic one is extremely, ex extre extremely difficult to sort, because a child does not remember in the womb what he received and what was the condition. Next question. I have a... I have a question uh, that came up, it's not my question actually, it's from Lixin Wang, and in that regard, uh, uh, you mentioned before when the mother has a child, um, that uh, essentially it's creating a, a new soul, and so her question has to do with 
how does is can you explain uh, reincarnation is or how does reincarnation work into that um, when the uh, you know if it's creating a new soul how could that soul also have previous lives if it's being created in this lifetime let's say scientifically go back to your gans and your gas and your nano layers the the go back to there is no reincarnation reincarnation does not exist if people say I used to be so and so. Scientifically, you can go back to exactly and say what they are. If they read a book, they feel about they are what they are, or they heard something, or they listened to something which they're not aware of, and then they say they are. And but you carry all the knowledge. I've said this before in other knowledge because you carry all the knowledge that you physically or emotionally have been present from the time of Adam. It's within your DNA. Actually, it's within your RNA. As I said, you carry the physical information of your color of your eye through your DNA, and the rest of the emotions and information through your RNA. So, people who say, oh, I've been reincarnated, I've been there and I know this, um, if you know something which you think is from time of the past, in your DNA, most probably we can uh, chase, trace it down to where it is and why and how and which ancestors you got it from, because they were present or they are aware of information which through your RNA you have access to now. So reincarnation does not exist, but when the mother gives a soul uh, life to uh, to a child, that is a different way because then uh, it's like saying that um, all the electrons are the same as other electrons but we know electrons are created from different neutrons they are part of the soul of the man is a copy of the same thing so your uh, your soul is part of the creation of your physicality. It's an electron part of the same uh, neutron dividing into electron and proton. It's not so much new as uh, maybe recycled. No, it's not recycled, it's added to. It's okay. Added. It's, added to. it's added to because you carry um, the the you you add to the other knowledges. It's as I say, when you receive a plasmatic energy by a plasma, you add to the mass. So it's the same thing. You add to the mass. You add to the to the to the soul. That's why we we elevate ourselves scientifically and morally because we add to what has been given to us before. I, I explained this before, uh, if you go back into other knowledge seekers or in other talks, that uh, um, a lot of cases can be unraveled what happened in the past in the history, if we can reach the soul of the people who come from that point and present in that situation. As I said, in a very near future, we will know the full truth about um, crucifixion. We will know a full truth about uh, uh, the whole history of man. We will see it visually, it will be shown to us. That's not the RNA, that's not the DNA, this is what has been recorded. Then we can match and see who has come from which background and then they can tell us to match the video we see, yes we've been, we know, we know, it's, we've been there through the, the RNA information which is stored, but we don't know how to tap into it. <clears throat> RNA is like a database disk. 
everything is on it you got to go and look for it and would that be stored in the muscles of the body as some it's, some might no, say no it's in the tissue no it's in Pardon the me? rna dna has a brother the dna has a parallel which is rna it's the process in rna it's in every cell of your body but certain groups of cells might be grouped together that would have certain data uh, associated with them and no, maybe you could access no, no. in in the body uh, go into the every, body to find that to retrieve it no no everywhere where you find out dna cannot exist without the rna so you have the physical it's like a computer you have the hardware and you have the software if there is a hardware, there is a software inside it, with it, otherwise you can't use it. But all, all of the RNA of a certain body wouldn't have all the same memories attached all to it. All the same it, memory, it? yes, yes. Okay, I see. It's just making copies of the same thing, because it's much easier. Information uh, is much easier to hold. It's actually it's like the soul of the, of the uh, DNA. This other part of it is it's a memory holding section. It's like you have a physical arm and hand, but all the memories are kept in the brain. You don't have a brain in every piece of your body, but with RNA you carry this. This is your memory bank of the, the whole creation from the time where you start recording. And all of us, because we are born from a mother and a father, or we, we have a link, we receive all the information through RNA. Is that linked to the uh, particles that exist in space between galaxies and so on, the interstellar particles, which uh, are actually that is the memory certain of the geometries? They can tell the, the history of these particles, even what star they came from, because they go through, create stars, and continue that's after the star is gone. That's a, that's a matter level. But wouldn't it be similar a, to a, a GANs a, almost? Like the, some of these particles uh, are very small, certain geometric shapes very similar to the RNA. And some people say that certain particles, some of these particles at least, a small percent, might be the life-forming particles that can form either life or matter, depending on how they're put together. It was, seems like almost a GANS material to me. Is GANS floating through space? The space is GANS. Even in this solar system, it's all GANS. GANS converts into matter. Uh, what you see in the structure, the same as what we see in the, as a soul of the man, galaxies have souls. I explained this before. And the souls is between the physicality of this space. The same as the solar system has a soul. Earth has a soul, and all of our souls is part of collective soul. So, um, I was explaining, they say, so if there is so much bad is going on on this planet, with the man, why doesn't the soul of the planet change? Very simple, seven billions soul are nothing compared to billions of ants, the fish, the other animals who are on this planet. We think we are the center of the, we thought we are the center of the creation, we think we are the most important creatures on this planet. But the total soul of the man, which is seven billion, is nothing compared to the soul of the uh, ant colony. So, in a way, uh, maybe for the first time man can understand, his soul has no effect on the totality of the soul of this planet. Because it's collective soul. Look at the animals, look at the animal kingdom. Look at the plant kingdom. They all have souls, because they are dynamic. A wheat does not eat another wheat. 
so soul of the man in totality does not affect the operation of this planet as a soul. It has an effect on it. But it doesn't do. It was a horrendous to see the video yesterday in what they did with the beautiful American young man. Where does that soul go? And where does the soul of the man who did the horrendous job? My condolences goes to the father and mother who had to go, have to go through what has happened to them. Pray his soul, he'll find peace somewhere, or balance somewhere. But where does the act of that animal goes? Nowhere. But in totality, because we are of the same, we can change that soul. The same thing is, I was explaining in the very past few days. We see the problems uh, uprising again in Middle East, in past 48 hours, 24 hours. I said to the, to the people, you know, you lose your child in Palestine, by bombing. Take the heart of the child, take the child, the body of the child, and walk to the soldiers of the Israeli army, and say, use the parts to save a child of Israeli child. The same goes for the Israelis, if you lost a father or a mother, take the body to the Palestinians and say, use the part to save another life which we destroyed. Then you see if the armies will fight. My idea, my recommendation, or what I can ask, is all the Palestinians who lose their family or whatever in this war, or in the future wars, not just in Palestine, between Israel and the Palestinians, in any war, take the bodies of what you lost, because it's just a physicality, if you can hold it fresh, to the soldiers of the enemy, say that at least use it to save some of your own children. You'll find out no soldier will fight. Because they find out they're equal, and the part is needed for their part to survive. Then, this is the, this is understanding of the, just the level of the soul. Because through the body, what is connected, if it's still alive, we carry the soul to another soul. This is part which, if the Palestinians understand, they stop killing each other, you don't need to kill. You just give freely, and then you find out, they will bring the walls down. The problem sits on both sides. Let the Israelis bring their child or children, which they, they can't get the organ to have with these wars killed. The soldier is still a child. <clears throat> and give it to the Palestinians to use it for the ones they killed, or maybe it's used. You don't need to go halfway around the world to find organs. The Israelis, the Jews and the Palestinians come from the same blood. That's why the Jews went back to Palestine, to be there in their motherland. And it's the motherland of the Palestinians, because they were all there, they were all of the same blood. You'll find a lot of matches between the two sides of the wall. <coughs> I requested this from our Iranian people. Let the Palestinians take their bodies of the children, the mother, the wife, who's been killed by a bomb from Israel. Just keep it fresh enough that they can use the organs to save the life of a child in Palestine, in Israel. <coughs> then you'll find out a soldier will not, will be, will be ashamed to accept such a thing. You have to show how horrendous the action of the man is. Nobody will fight for the war. Next question. Are there I any wanted more to say something about the RNA. Is the uh, information stored, is the information stored where the uh, phosphorus bond is in the RNA, the higher dimensional energy is where the information comes from? The information is kept in a plasmatic condition, has no materialistic condition. RNA has, doesn't have a physical dimensions like the soul. It's the field connection. It's exactly like uh, your disk. It's your memory bank.
also I um re regarding your what you're trying to do in Africa, I have some people that are interested in uh, getting involved with you in that. If you wanted to talk about it some other time in private with these people. What happened? We have a huge problem at the moment. We send the material to go to Sierra Leone, and through international pressures or whatever, or whatever they're trying to put on us, um, the material was brought back to us on Wednesday because they don't allow the material to go. <coughs> we need somebody literally to carry this material to, to in a suitcase if anybody is going to to Sierra Leone or to West Africa, where this problem is that we can get it to the to the officials, that they can launch the launch the trial to see what we can do. Um, the, we have a problem. This is something which I didn't want to discuss, but you brought it up. Anybody in Europe who is going to Sierra Leone, please contact the Foundation. We need this package to receive to be received by the President, as a Presidential Office in Sierra Leone that they can start trials to stop the um, death in the, uh, in this in this part of the world. We have a problem and I thank anybody who can help us. The package is here sitting on the table and we cannot find a way. I even ask if we can shift it through diplomatic calls of different governments we have contact with. And um, some sort of, it's been a embargo on Cash Foundation to get this material into Sierra Leone. We need an individual who can carry the package, it's only about 200 gram, maybe 300 gram. The material needs to be get, to get to the health departments in Sierra Leone, that the test can be done on it. So, the, the, if these anybody people that I work with, they, they should yep. be able to help you with that. They work with uh, governments and presidents of all kinds of countries over in Africa and the Middle East. They have no problem uh, moving stuff. They work at a high uh, level. Please. Uh, yeah, we work at the highest level. We can't work at the highest level. We can't. But uh, we need somebody to physically get this material into Sierra Leone. We desperately need well, it they sitting meet, here. They meet with the, the presidents of Nigeria, Iran, and all, all those countries. In the, in the, so they, they have all those oh, connections they, already. All I need to do, all I need to do, somebody, it doesn't matter where they sit, if you know somebody who can take this package for us to deliver it to the ambassador in, the, in Sierra Leone or to the office of the president, uh, we have no problem. It's just physically getting it there because uh, UPS returned it back to us. It says, we cannot move this for you after holding it for a week. So the package is back here. If these people are anywhere, you can guarantee that we will be received by our uh, by our people, officials in the government in Sierra Leone. We can deliver it to you anywhere. You can come to the Sansano and pick it up. There is no problem. Well, we need somebody okay. physically to take this across. We asked for a diplomatic bag to be used. They said they cannot do this. They won't allow it to happen. But even if it's in the diplomatic bag, it should be nobody should know. But to do that, to go to foreign offices and everything takes weeks and weeks. So we need anyone flying, traveling to Sierra Leone, please contact us. Our people will meet you at the airport or any port you enter at the government level and take it over from you. Next question. Contact me through Rick if you can help. Sorry, if you can help, contact me through Rick. Who it is, what it is, we. We established their credential through our security people, and uh, we are happy. We'll hand over the material to go. Yeah, you'll have no problem with that. No problem. Okay. Please help, because you're helping another man with the illness in, in, in the country. We don't know if that results will be correct, but from the test we've done here in the, in the lab in past two weeks, uh, oh, we are pretty sure we can do some good. Contact through Rick well, and then uh, establish the link, and we can send it through immediately. Okay. Regarding the cup of life, the three cups you needed for the the three the three range of energies, are those cups with the range of minerals that are for the three systems, like the uh, autonomic nervous system or the parietal system? Those three systems. Is that why you need the three cups? No. Okay. We use the three cups because the cups absorb different plasmatic magnetic fields. 
this is the assumption, because we do the same thing on the health side. On the health well, side, we work on the energy, we work on the emotion and the, um, and the psychologic. Well, I was thinking like the minerals, they're usually divided into the three. They go, one will go to the parietal system and to the certain, certain glands and the other group will go to this gland system and operating system. And so those three systems, I was thinking that's why you needed to cut one for each of those systems. Mm. I don't look at it that way. Maybe it is, but I don't look at it that way because in the, in the health section now, um, we can produce a system which is the exact copy of the structure of the human body. Brain side, emotional side, physical side, left side, right side, the hands, the fingers, uh, physical part of the fingers and the brain part of the fingers and the hand. In one cup, we can replicate the whole structure of the man. It's extremely difficult, extremely dangerous, but um, we have managed to achieve that. It's a major breakthrough for our work. Uh, but uh, you know, literally, we can dictate which finger or which hand, or if the upper arm or the heart or the liver we want to reach, and the emotion of the if the the the, if the operation of the emotional part in respect, let's say, to the heart or to the to the liver. The advanced the technology in a single cup is so advanced that people cannot even imagine. But it's come through trials. It hasn't come through. We have to understand physicality of the man, the operation of it. So, what you explain is more or less we try to achieve all in one cup. But that cup we have a control over. With the cup of life, you have to reach all levels, physical and emotional, and the neural system at the same time. It's a it's a very interesting development, and uh, the first uh, cups chewing out for about two months now. We see amazing results, amazing amazing results. So. In the future, through a cup of water, or what you give, you make as a cup of water, you can control in respect how the arm will move physically in respect to the emotion which is created and why it's gone paralyzed. But one of the shortage in the link is the amino acid side connecting the making neuro, um, what's it called? It's called SMN or a NSM, in this got the terminology, it's a neuron system which works within the nerve system, converting the information into a physical motion. That's the level we are working on now to develop. But a cup of life should be able to do all that in one go. There was a couple of questions from Ivan uh, Fingold in the, the um, um, yeah, that goes something like if someone have to have a good behavior and be a good person to feel the energy from the cup of life, why that people with uh, Alzheimer and those in coma that use this cup still get better and uh, cured? Does that make sense? It's a, it's a little. Maybe I can paraphrase that better. It's basically paraphrase. Um, <laughs> Someone has to be in the in the right, uh, uh, you know, mental or emotional um, uh, st state. I said state before in last workshop. And you corrected me in terms of their whole life has to be that way. They have to be a certain person in order to receive this energy from the cup. So why would people that are not conscious essentially or not able to focus on their their uh, uh, present environment and so on. Like someone in a coma, they could benefit from the cup even though they're not um, necessarily oh, oh. consciously interacting with it. Oh, no, no, no. This goes back to your schizophrenic brain condition. <laughs> Just because you don't see the body moving, you think there is no emotion. 
You know, uh, this is very, very simple. I can tell you this from, uh, from experience we have. I don't know if some of you have heard this before, but I explained to you, you understand. Um, it's video, we can show you the video. When we were given the coma body, where three doctors in Belgium signed the documents, that, or they told us that they, the, 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 the brain is dead, physically the body is, uh, is just a heartbeat. When uh, we received the body at home, with uh, four people with the health section responsible for its monitoring, the Belgium doctor who received the body before I did, he did all the tests in the house, that the condition the body is arrived from the hospital in the hand of the uh, our medical team. Doctors say, brain dead, there is nothing. Physically, uh, the videos of it you could see up to about two years ago on the Cash Foundation website. The body physically twisted into the into the shape of the coma section where the the toes bent back to the heel towards the heel and literally go like a full circle in the in cases. We started the process on a Wednesday lunchtime. By Thursday lunchtime, mm, the brain was active and. Uh, person came out of coma. And then, when he came out of coma, he came, he went to a shock. Because people who are in coma, you bring them back, uh, you bring back the physical part of the brain back to work. But, because they've been inactive on the bed for, let's say, three months, six months, a year, ten years, the physical parts don't have the, don't receive the information, don't have the muscle tissues to move. Because everything has gone in more or less a shutdown, a physical motion side, but not shut down for nourishment part of the body, because body has two neurosystems. One is the one which is connected to the stomach, brain system, which is for nutrition, to feed your muscles. When you go in coma, you don't lose your arm and legs, don't fall, uh, fall off and disappear. Because the neurosystem of the uh, intestines is responsible for the muscle tissues. This is what is separated between the brain and the body millions of years ago. Billions of years ago. So, the, uh, the physical part of the brain comes out, but it cannot, you want, you wake up, you want to move your arm, but what your eyes, which is automatically, is the first thing comes out, or the emotion part of the feeling, you see the arm doesn't move. I want to move my leg, the leg doesn't move, so you go into emo emotional shock, as you become paralyzed, you understand the paralysis in that second. Then it took us a week to get uh, the person in to interact with us on the emotional side. I saw the body coming back, I was there when she woke up, but I saw how I lost her through the shock. Then we understood we have to use a special way now that the people coming out of coma, they cannot see their physicality. They are aware the body is there, we let them feel or think the body moves, but you blind them from seeing their physical part. Because now, you woken the physical part of the brain, but you cannot move the physical part of the body. Then I went into searching, how can I get this body out of the shock and give it enough confidence that it can start, I can achieve what I came to achieve to bring it out of physical um, uh, coma too. I asked the parents and the friends, what does she need, what does she connect it to? And uh, they said to me, she, she loved to smoke, she loves a cigarette. I found my weakness point in the structure of the body of the man. 
I asked for a cigarette, which was her usual, she smokes. And I just, without lighting it up, I just, just brought it under her nose. It was not working. Then, I said to her, can you feel the cigarette? Can you taste the cigarette? I put it on the lips, I said, if you want to smoke, you move your toe. That I know you are with me, then we can take you out. The first time, no response. I, I let her feel the heat of the cigarette on her body, not touching her, just, she could, she knew the taste, the, the thing was there, she knew a cigarette. I said, if you want me to help you to come out of this condition, and you can hear me, just move your toe. I know the toe doesn't move, but you can move your toe. And she moved her toe the first time. This is all videoed, we can show it to you, we released in the videos. It used to be on the center, at the foundation forum. Then, we start establishing a link between the physicality and the emotion side, and physical part of the brain and the physical part of the body. It took me two weeks without anything. Uh, Yo was there, Yo who listens to this program, he's always present, I know he listens, he can tell you. By the fourth week, she could sit on the table, I used to cook meal for her to feed her. What happened? If she's brain dead, what happened to the, to the, all the information? If she's dead physically, we say she's in a coma, what happens to the emotional part? As long as the physical part operates, the emotional part is there. It's like putting a computer on a, not a shutdown, but on a standby. Even when you shut your computer and you open up, all the information, they data, all the programs are there. Even if you take the computer from here to Japan or anywhere else. So, in no circumstances, unless there is a suffocation condition, which stops the work of the operation of the uh, emotional side, as long as the body breathes, the emotional part alive exists and the soul is with it. And this is one of the reasons I go back to the beginning of this uh, workshop. We work and work around ILS, MS, uh, fibromyalgia and psychological problem. Because the physicality is not important, but it's keeping the emotional part in act, that you don't take the energy from the emotional part, is the whole purpose of the operation of the, the Foundation's work on the health side. So, you go to coma, this is the physical part, which is switched off. The background information, memory bank, which is your emotion and the soul, exists as long as energy is converted through your lungs, or through any system, or through your limbs, into the energy that the emotional part has to live. The thing is, you have to always remember, it doesn't matter what they say, that the, the guy is a brain dead, or whatever, or, as long as, <coughs> as long as the tissues don't get wasted, as long as the brain cells are active, and the, you don't see disintegration of the brain by its own, through lack of receiving of energy, it literally uh, decomposes, it um, rots, then the emotional part is active, the person is alive, and it's your responsibility to keep it a safe place, or carry it to a safe place, or allow it to manifest itself in any functionality. Even if it means by means of a computer, it can connect the emotional part to a system that it can show its existence, you still have a soul, and it's your responsibility to protect it. So, if you go in a coma just because the doctor says it's dead, it's their own doctor's death because they don't understand the meaning of the existence and life. If they, you bring them back, they cannot remember, you can still teach them. A lot of people get taught from the beginning, at, uh, 
uh, different ages as they lose part of their memory, because another part of the brain will take the responsibility. So, no one ever dies. The separation of the soul from physicality comes when the emotional part is switched off. As long as you have a heartbeat, as long as you keep the life on the support machine, it's the responsibility of physicians to keep that emotional part alive and in a working condition. Because in the future, you'll understand, you can literally go to the emotional part, separate it, and give it the life, and let it be. Einstein should not die, and God knows, scientists in the world, just because they lost their physicality, doesn't mean they lost their emotion, and physical, uh, their, what you call, understanding part. So, coma, that's, as I said, we do so much research on the m uh, emotional side, as to how to handle this in the future for man in a space, to handle his own, uh, what do you call it, same things, the human race. So, please, if you see somebody in coma and they switch the machine off, the man who switches the machine off, if the physical body is still working, it's literally like a executor. Just because you don't see physical motion, doesn't mean that the the, the emotional part, which is the essence of the creation, is switched off. It's always there, we've seen it, we've shown it. The girl is still alive, it's a woman, she's not how old is she? She's in the mid-40s, an article was published about her in a Belgium magazine uh, on the 19th of February 2013. The Israeli scientists, with the Cambridge scientists, and the Belgium scientists in Liège hospital have tested the confirmation of their intelligence. She distinguishes between things. So, all we need, if we get the emotional part, we get all the information, all the beauty of the creation. With that, we give it different physicality. People with COVID ILS, they can't use their arms and legs and everything else. They use their eyes to communicate. We should be able to give the same thing to the emotional part for it to communicate. It doesn't need the arm and hands to communicate. Stephen Hawking is one of his best examples. Huh? Next question. I'd like to um, introduce a beautiful little reactor that uh, Armin has uh, 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 just shown a picture of here. And he's online. I can't see pictures. I cannot yeah, see pictures. Yeah, that's the... it's unfortunate. I don't know. Um, I I could try. If to you do send this. it to me, I'll have a look. Send it to me. Right. Oh, it's in the chat actually. I'll just I'll see if I can just do a screen share here. Just a sec here. Just. Uh, Thanks, just, Vince. That's the best way. You to can do probably it. see it with a screen share. Let's see if that works. Is is this the core which uh, we were hoping Abam will make when he left? I asked him a smallest core you can make. It's a beautiful little core. It's uh, almost thumb size. It's so small. The, the picture shows him holding it in his thumb and forefinger, basically. <laughs> it is beautiful. <laughs> it's simply beautiful. Thank you very much, Armin. <laughs> And there's a picture we, of we, um, uh, several of them, the family, the, the core family. Yeah, we need the four. I asked Armand, we need four of them to be able to create an amino acid. These small reactors, even to their size, should be as powerful as the big ones. They, Armand, they, did you manage to make the internal part moving the way you showed me the motor before you leave? Uh, uh, this is what, uh, b because uh, Mr. Kesh, I have so much uh, little time in here, so I did my best actually. It's a core, uh, it's all made from uh, one lot of material, and it's uh, uh, the core is uh, just screwed in. It's a very simple uh, design. But it's still internal, internally it rotates, and the external it rotates. No, externally rotates. The whole whole reactor is rotating. But I have already designed the, that two uh, inside core is rotating separately and outside is separately. But I don't have a time to wait until Bring he Bring it back. We'll fix it here. That'll be fantastic. It's a... 
Thank you very much. You're welcome. Can you see Thank the picture at all? No, I'll go on the live stream and I'll look at it on the live stream here on this um, system. I don't. We don't have the facility of the my what they call it the camera or being able to see. I can send you email, Mr. Kish. Yes, yeah, send it to me by email. I'll have a look. Thank you very much, Harman. It's one inch uh, diameter. Wow. Inside. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, I think it wins the prize for the most beautiful reactor of the year. It's just small and uh, precise looking and it looks really robust too. It's thick walled and looks like it could take a beating and keep on ticking. <laughs> as, they, as, they say, as they say in the old Timex watch ads, right? Um, we need to go this is small. We need to go next step smaller. Uh, but um, uh, this, this, um, uh, these miniature reactors uh, will show us a new dimension in the interaction uh, with uh, bigger reactors. We can see their interaction with other reactors hard because now. If we can put it on a small plate, uh, then we can move it in between the reactors and see how the fields interact between each other, between the reactors, between different sets. This this becomes as a whole like a, a electron in respect to the other sets we have as protons. This is the first three dimensional, we can use it to hang them individually. I have made a stand we can use it for and see how they interact with each other. The stand is on the... it's been made a few months ago. It's a stick in a pallet with three bits hanging and the fourth bit on top of it. So one is stand at center core and the other one can move. This gives us the first time the ability to do a three-dimensional. That's fantastic, Harman. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Next question. I have a small question uh, regarding uh, uh, the nanowire. Who's speaking? Uh, Sandor. Sandor Bakas. So, uh, there is a, a photo on uh, uh, the Cash Foundation uh, webpage with a test uh, with uh, two uh, pieces of nano-coated wire which are twisted and there is yeah. a measurement of the uh, resistance uh, between the terminals. I try to replicate that and uh, maybe I did something wrong with my uh, uh, coating because whenever I twist the coating the resistance uh, just breaks, sometimes down to uh, two ohms. So I don't know what uh, happened, what I have to do differently to make a resistance you, uh, coating, which withstand this spinning, twisting. How fast, how fast do you take your copper wire out and test it? If it's dry, there should be no problem. The other thing you can do before you twist them, um, just uh, rub the wires down with your finger. Put a glove on and lock the rails down, crush the layers, and then twist them. So I will try that way also. So this they the were basically you... dry, they were uh, pretty dry. I, I took them out uh, yeah. since longer time and I dried with the air dryer also. The best uh, example is if you want to see the resistance, but to measure is different. Connect, uh, when you twist the two wires together, uh, connect one end to a 9 volt battery or to a battery and connect the other end to a light bulb. If you can correct, if you can connect it to like a, what I used to do, a Christmas tree, uh, you will see the light on the Christmas tree comes in a sequence as it is programmed in a chip 
and at the same time you will see the heating up of the wire. You will see the AC and the DC together in the pi in, in the same wire. And uh, you will find out at a point where it cuts off or it gets very warm, your wire literally or your battery gets really hot. Because it has to overcome conversion of the plasma into the matter and the resistance in it. And you see the two wires never, you never get a short circuit. Even you get a high temperature in your battery, you never get a short circuit in your uh, the light bulbs. The best example of it is use, you know these little um, Christmas trees you see with about 10, 20 little LED lights on it, they flash in a different way. Yes. I find that was one of the best ways to do it, connected to a battery, to twist the two wires and to the other end. You will see the effect of both AC and DC on the same wire. Um, I will try that. Wouldn't uh, you I be, also... uh, question on that uh, experiment. Wouldn't you be trying to get a maximum resistance so that it wouldn't uh, transfer the energy? And in other words, you wouldn't want to crush the nano coating because then it might be copper on copper. So uh, why not? No, give no, it... you never get a copper on copper. You never get a copper on copper. In spite of you it being crushed. You still have some layers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's still nano layers. Well, what I was you still suggest... have. Some... Why not give it an extra uh, vapor bath before, after they're twisted together, and that would give an additional um, uh, coating oh, between know. them, so they maintain their own path, even though they're they maintain it. They maintain so many different ways with it. If you if you get your wire and rub it, you see it. It changes from matte to very shiny. I did that oh, with okay. pieces of copper pipe. Yeah, and then you see that shows perfect insulation. What do you do? You crush, let's say out of 30,000 layers, you crush 20,000 of it. In the center, there is still nano layers. They are all nano layers, but not con pushed close to each other. You don't destroy it even with pushing it. You don't put the nano layers uh, together, what do you call it? You don't destroy it. You just crush them down. It's like a sponge. You squeeze it. You don't destroy it. You cannot destroy the nano layer. It doesn't make any difference in the resistance. Some black powder Pardon? comes off whenever I uh, wipe it with a uh, paper tissue. Yeah, this is the top layers which are weak in gravitational magnetic field connected to the lower layers below. This is like literally like your skin, you know? Your skin looks perfectly attached to you till you wet it and then you rub it and then the skin comes off. Your uh, top of skin, uh, you yeah. know? Uh, they, they say so we, we lose a, a couple of pounds of uh, a kilo or so of skin. Uh, uh, per day or something like that. It's an incredible amount of skin actually falls off our bodies. Uh, you know, it's oh, like... that, top layer. No, that top layer is a skin which has got a loose magnetic connection with the bottoms. When you take it off, the rest is there. I understand. I tried other things also. I tried to twist uh, uh, a non-coated uh, copper wire on the coated uh, copper wire to make a more stable contact for making some measurements. And uh, when I touched uh, just gently, it was okay, it was uh, high resistance and so on, but whenever I uh, twisted them, uh, already the resistance uh, became zero. So here also, we, uh, shall I apply the same method first to uh, rub it until it's shiny? Yes, what happened sometime when I do the testing is um, I push the, the point of the meter onto the skin of the, the, well, the nano coating on the copper wire. These are very, very, very thin. In some places you can literally penetrate through to the copper. This is the problem mm. I did. Yeah, I, 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 I'm afraid I, I penetrated to the, the copper. You sometimes because it's just nano layers, so minute, you can penetrate it. You can we can scratch it off. There is something you most probably all of you done. You know when you get the nano wire 
and you connect, you hold one end of the wire with one of the uh, connections of your voltmeter and you can move the other one up and down and you see how you discharge the wire. Your voltage jumps up and down. And then you release it and go back again and do it again and you see that the charging is done. <coughs> and the voltage <coughs> on certain points is always the same. There is a process you have where you you will you'll make uh, wires to make your batteries, or you make system to make batteries, and you see it doesn't work. Because somewhere in the wire, in the length of the wire, the polarity has changed. Something in the process has created two polarity system. If you look very closely, you see the line of change of polarity. So, we had this in the lab, where we go, we put so many containers, and suddenly in between, one pot and the other pot, the polarity in one section changes um, opposite to the other. The same thing happens in your nano layers. Oh, I understand. And that, hap <coughs> that happens when our wives walk in too, I guess, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta ask, we gotta ask the man who did the test. <laughs> well, my wife. I, I wonder how the meter will show what value if the mistress walks in. I, uh, and I I wonder I wonder how the meter would show if uh, my if my ex walked in because she's been dead for three years. <laughs> no, but uh, but emotions, emotions are part of our system. It's Are you amazing trying to make a light detector there. Uh, we already have it. Uh, you already have it, but you're not aware of it. You call it trust. I can trust you, or I can't trust you. It's your sensor in your light detector. Is in a way your emotion says it matches me. You can't take more than what I can give you. But uh, yes. Can we create a lens to see the magnetic fields, plasmatic magnetic fields? Yes. It can be detectable for human eye? You don't need it. You need the field detectors. What do you call like aurora, aurora detectors? Uh -huh. uh, you need that kind of thing. Uh, very soon we'll be in position of one. I'm working on one. Um, Mr. Kesh, along that line, I just uh, read a, a physics article that came out just recently, a couple of days ago, about uh, a new technique to sense the magnetic fields on the atomic level uh, using a magnetic resonance technique, but not with the big uh, extreme magnetic fields that they use normally for the nuclear magnetic resonance, or NMR. Uh, but instead using the Earth's um, own magnetic field as the field um, that's able, and then, then since it's a weaker field, the field doesn't interfere with their ability to actually observe the atom and, and uh, particles. This is supposedly a new technique. As it may be uh, something that proves useful. Send me the link. Let's have a look. Will do. Do you ever sleep, uh, Rick? I try not. I try not to. It's, <laughs> I've actually been pretty tired this summer, though. I've, I've had to sleep quite a bit. <laughs> the papers but, you read and the work you do and the lab uh, you work at, the things you make, I think you're worse than me. One hour is too much. <laughs> I wish I could do more, actually, so... Um, I, it's, um, I'm trying to write uh, this paper to do with the nano layers and the GANs, and uh, uh, confirmation of the motion of the... Uh, uh, of the magnetic field, and more detailed information in that. So, you can actually use other ganses to show the, the field of the other ganses. The same as we talked about the sandwiching. 
Now you do a nanolayer against a nanolayer, but if you can do nanolayer of different composition and different between uh, a sandwich between two other nanolayers, you already should be able to see the gans of the, the, the fields around them, or the layers, the brightness, the light in between the layers. Uh, this will show very soon. There are a lot of things happening which we have to wait till we get a collaboration and cooperation in a different way, and then it'll be done. We are going to a very important phase at the moment in the Foundation in regarding the development. Uh, because we don't have the expertise um, or the facilities, uh, we are joining up with other organizations who have the facilities and the expertise to support the work. So that will change a lot of you. You will hear about very, very big changes in the foundation in the coming weeks and months. Very, very. But we don't announce them anymore that we don't get blocked. The people who are trying to block. We notice when we announce things on the workshops, we start seeing problems in the background. So we ask our people to look into how this happens. Apparently the people who are the enemies of the foundation listen to this and they work immediately to stop the work. So we don't announce anymore, we change a lot of things in our security structure too. Um, so it'll be like before, we just announce it uh, when it happened or after it happened. Uh, it's the same thing as I said with the, with the frogs. Uh, we don't need to announce it, because now that the job is done for a certain job, we're, we're in working with another organization, now the job is done, now we'll see where we go the next. Uh, there are a lot of people who see us as enemies and stuff, friends, but that's their, their problem. Let me say something, uh, can I mention something? A lot of people listen to these workshops. I thank those organizations who are trying to support us in different ways. And they offer their support in different, by different means and different ways of doing it. Um, we are getting to the point that uh, the ones who offer the support or different uh, fields of support past five or ten years, we have kept more or less all of your emails and your off connections or your uh, offers. We'll come back to you now that we are getting to that point. Yes, carry on. Um, right, well, I think maybe we should start wrapping things up here. It's uh, three hours and almost 15 minutes, or is there anybody else who's got any uh, burning questions, and, or should we let Mr. Kesh uh, finish his breakfast? <laughs> well, my breakfast finished a long time ago. I get the small. Yeah, we heard the punching, right? No, 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 no. I it's actually, I'm amazed how you were able to eat and talk clearly at the same time. It's a very good. Uh, no, when you talk, I put it on the microphone, shut off, and then I'll oh, play that. Okay, very good. He's, <laughs> he's learning the techniques. So <laughs> we, we've trained him well, guys. <laughs> I'm getting there slowly, slowly, slowly getting there. Yeah, um, I have a, there's I have not a hard much time I can... with that too. I keep punching the button, the little red button, and uh, on Skype, and uh, the call suddenly ends, and that happened last night accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is something I received on the email from Kerry Cassidy. If anybody wants to organize a program for her, the first of October, uh, September. Uh, the Italians are still on holiday and asleep in hibernation. But anybody wants to organize a meeting for Kerry Casti in, uh, in Northern Italy, she's still available. Um, the situation with our Maltese friend is the same. Hopefully they can organize their foundation and their work this week, or next week. And then hopefully we announce uh, opening of the Cash Foundation Malta and we invite people for the health section there. Anything else? Any other question or we wind it up? I think I got a quick one and I think a lot of it's been answered um, at the, on this workshop. Um, but last night we were talking about JF's um, 
PDF file and his results, and and we asked him about okay, when he was yeah. making his next one. Our <clears throat> Jeff Dupont, he's the one that that Rick was saying uh, did the measurements. Uh, John Francois, was, yeah, John Francois yeah. is a GAF part. Go yeah. ahead, Vince. What has he done? Well, he's creating another reactor, and um, so he'll have a twinity. Uh, a, I guess a twinity of itself, because the first one is also a dual core. But um, I was advising him to, if he wants to try to take the plasma out of the original one and uh, and balance it into the other one, to do what you guys did, which was run the nano-coated wire from the north of the primary to the south of the new one, and vice versa as well. Um, and I tried to explain that as the plasma wire will interact with the fields that are created from inside the plasma that he's already created. It should be moved along the wire via those fields into the secondary reactor. Does that sound like something he should possibly do? The energy reactor, which came in from Belgium, which is a, was for a long time hanging in the center core, that reactor has been preset for transfer of plasma. The way we have done it uh, is that we have a center core, we have a main core, outer core, we have a uh, middle core, and we have a center core. The whole of this center core pipe to its feeding point is totally nano-coated internally. It took me a long time to nano-coat it. So, it's ready for a nano-pipe to be added to it. All we have to do is just to where we are feeding now with a rotating valve, to change it to a nano-coated pipe, to transfer plasma into another reactor. To transfer plasma from one core to another, you need a nano coat piping. You cannot do it by wire. Copper pipe, I presume, might be a, a good yes, choice. Yes. A flexible copper yeah, pipe. I, yeah, I've already discussed that with the knowledge seekers when they were here. The only reactor which we have set for a transfer of plasma is the original energy plasma. It's been set for this job. The pipes have already been uh, nano coated heavily internally in all three layers and in, in, the, in the feeding pipes. All the feeding pipes in that reactor are nano coated because then the plasma does not come touch with physicality to change itself, it moves through the same pipe. Then you create a, the same as you create a vacuum condition, different. The vacuum condition in our reactors is a different uh, pressure level. You create a different magnetic gravitational level of strength in one reactor and then you get it transferred from one to another. This is how in the future you don't start with the hydrogen to build up your reactor or change the plasma of the reactor or increase the mass. You use a bank, you use a reserve plasma bank and you just take it from there through coated nanomaterials. This coated nanomaterials, the way you are doing it and you talk about it, so what do you call it, offhand, as so to say, it is a dream of the plasma physicist. The, uh, the, a lot of plasma physicists are getting to understand how to do it for the first time through these uh, workshops. Because the nano layer is a plasmatic, is no matter, it's all field, as we explained, that's why you can't what you call weld them or sold them together. The the plasma literally floats on a carpet of magnetic tube. One of the easiest way to do it is make a copper tube fully non-coated externally and internally and then melt the copper out. Then you have you can transfer plasma perfectly from one reactor core to another. Uh, this, this, this is very, 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 very important for the future of the plasma. But uh, energy reactor was set to do this. You can't do it with a wire. The reason we used the copper wire was to make the connection between the plasma as a field. But the transfer of the plasma okay. has to be done through the tubing. Right, so, so he still has to create a plasma in the second one, but then he can use the wire to create the connection and the balance between the two. 
Yes, but the, the way you create the second plasma of different mass is that you, after we done that here with the knowledge seekers, <coughs> we will spend days and days, we keep on increasing the mass of plasma, what we do, we put hydrogen on a regular basis and we add like nitrogen to create a plasma, we add to the mass of the plasma. Let's say you do that 20 times in one, and 10 times in the other. So, you have a ratio of 1 to 2 in the plasma mass, uh, considering that you achieve the plasmification of the same quantity. So, then you know you can transfer from the, um, what do you call it, bigger mass by plasma pressure, or by to the smaller mass by a weaker plasma. But then you have to create the opposite to be able to interact it. So, when you build up your plasma tanks in the future, you have to understand the process of holding the plasma in plasma mass in respect to the place you're sending it to. It's like opening a tap with a pressure pump or creating vacuum and pulling it in. You can do both ways with the plasma, but you need a plasma tubing, and the plasma tubing is um, you build up a, a, a the best way to do it is to nano coat internally a copper wire that you have a physicality you can work with. Don't coat your nano pipe from outside. You can do it for the insulation, but you absorb a lot of energy outside into the copper pipe and has a lot of plasma transfer, which can cause problems in your reactor. So what you do, you put uh, like caustic in the center in the tube and you lock the two ends, but you make your tube first, exactly to the where it's got to be connected, where it has to be, where the connection has to be, and then you coat it, and then you connect it. But at the same time, make sure that your connection is pure enough that you don't create um, salt in your pipe, then then damages your piping and all your system and your reactor. Uh, it's a very it's a very easy process, but you, you have to do it systematically. Then you connect the pipe from one reactor to the other reactor, and then uh, you can transfer plasma. It's the only way you can do it. There is no other way. There is another way to do. If you break the the core, open the core. If you can hold on to the plasma internally, as as a center point, then you can use the the piping without any matter. That can be done. But then you have an interaction, and then you have a condition between the matter state plasma and the plasma in the plasma condition between your nanopipes and your plasmas, and the interface between the plasmas. So, you literally, what you do, is like blowing at your um, reactor. Uh, when you break your reactors, it's like two suns, they don't have a containment. But what you do, you allow the tube to blow from one to another, so you spray it like a dust on the top, and it gets absorbed into the center. It's a beautiful way to do it. This is done in the space technology for deep space production of materials. So, if you want to go from copper, let's say, to gold, you you do it that way and you make it, you decide the alloy condition or water condition if you want to do it. It's done by a lot of races in the space. Next question, if there is any more. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cash. You're quite welcome. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope oh, we achieved, we're going to step further in the knowledge. And we'll see what we do next week. Thank you for your time. Thank you. We really Thank covered you. a lot Thank tonight. It was great. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for all your hard work, Rick. Thank you. Thank you indeed. Bye bye. But You're thanks. Welcome. Thanks, Alman. Bye bye. All right. That was the 24th Nolly Seekers workshop. That was a good one. I think okay. that was one for the history books. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was late. My God. <laughs> Don't worry, you can get the audio of the workshop at the new Google Drive that will be posted <laughs> in Facebook. There you go. Yep.
So that's a big hint on the live stream before we shut off to stop here. Anything else you want to um, bring up or suggest before I shut the uh, live stream? No. <clears throat> okay. John, anything? Well, I would just say that uh, I'm trying to do my best between my family and the work I have to do. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> sorry I didn't bring you in there, John. I should have uh, brought you up there, but uh, you're sort of uh, a little quieter tonight, so. Yes, but uh, what should, should be done in the measurements, uh, Vince, uh, is to see what AC comes in. Because when we have some uh, power supply, or, uh, energy power supply, we always have some uh, AC. And uh, if you look with an uh, oscilloscope, you could see the frequency of the, the, the AC. So you can yeah, uh, separ separate what, what is interference to what is a really real coll collection of uh, AC. Um, Vince, exactly. Yeah, Vince, this is just a preliminary, right? Vince, yeah. you might consider a, a iPhone oscilloscope app. I've actually got one of those. It's, it's they're fairly cheap, a few bucks. It might work. <laughs> well, I think uh, one for the computer would be better. Uh, I see yeah. some software ones out there. Yes, but uh, you have to see uh, that. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, spectrum uh, that uh, that uh, oscilloscope can uh, collect. Normally, uh, 50, uh, 60 hertz uh, for you uh, would be the mains uh, frequency, and uh, you have also all the frequencies coming from the aerials of your cell phones and all that. So you have a lot yep. of uh, interference coming in. Well, yep. anyway. You can see if you can have some DC coming out of that IAC, that the uh, nano coating is uh, behaving as a, 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 a diode, a semiconductor PN junction. Yeah, I get AC and DC. I've had up as much as 500 millivolts off the DC end of things. So, so we'll just continue, make it better. Yes, we have to continue. And um, in fact, uh, for, for me, for you, uh, I gave a, a picture to, to Rick. I don't know if you, it has been shown or not, uh, but um, I have been making a connection from uh, uh, why so the one side were co uncoated and another side uh, coated, <coughs> testing them together and put it, putting that to a capacitor. I uh, saw so there have been a lot of uh, discussion about uh, what's the good capacitor or not. Uh, any capacitor is is good. Uh, it's, but uh, what I saw is that um, I think I had some, uh, uh, when I was making the connection, I have had some uh, voltage coming onto the capacitor. And after a certain time, that capacitor just discharged and this, there was nothing more coming in. So what I made is not yet the, the the solution for what we have to understand. There's still some things that have to be uh, changed and put in a way that uh, will continue to collect in, uh, in, uh, electricity. It's always a conversion between the plasma and the uh, electron uh, movement. Yes, completely agree. It's a the plasma force could be great, but the we need an electron force. That's what is use. That is what is useful, and uh, there are still a lot of aspects that have to be understood. 
Yeah, I was talking to Brett today and we were talking about this and there's either two ways to go and that's to make everything run on a plasma force or, or to change the plasma into a electron via what we already have as in capacitors or batteries or whatever else we have to convert that back into an electron force. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> But I was able to charge a little battery off of it, so it's it's a beginning, right? It's the beginning. Yeah, yes, yes. Well, we are reaching some. And I uh, would, I would say, don't keep the prior knowledge of the laws of uh, voltage and amperage when you're dealing with this stuff, because it seems to be just right out the window for me, at least. <laughs> I, I agree, I've had too many bizarre uh, effects take place to to believe any of the regular formulas. I mean, there might be formulas that could explain all the different effects, but you'd have to add in everything from capacitance to high and low voltages and AC and DC and, and a bunch of other um, quantum effects and uh, mind control and all kinds of things that you would be up to your neck in uh, formulas uh, trying to figure it all out when the direct observation I of what's going on is much more valuable. I think, you know, how we've had the problem uh, or they've had the problem with quantum computers. Um, this could be a way to run that uh, quantum computer because we're already dealing with the plasma in the terms of the computer and this is a good way to provide that power. But. We're not at that point yet, right? Well, the plasma is something uh, completely different, and it, uh, that's uh, uh, towards where we have to go in the understanding. When we deal with electrons, we know we have all what has been uh, demonstrated. What is not known is what is. Uh, to be understood was the plasma. Sounds right to me. Uh, and as soon as we have the interference of both, that is, uh, that is also something else. How does the plasma will push the electron to move the way we wish it to have it moving. Well, still a lot to understand. Yeah, that's the real trick <laughs> is to get moving. Yes. Yeah. Much, John. And uh, so that's the end of the 24th workshop. Thanks, everybody. Bye for now.